Open work session meeting for June 13th, 2022, uh, with the approval of the agenda. I make a motion we approve the agenda. A second. It's been moved and second. All in favor? All right. I guess we'll begin with discussions. Uh, Mayor, just a uh brief introduction so staff is available to answer any questions that the board may have to put them in a position where they can adopt a budget for the fiscal year 23. We'll recognize um, Commissioner, Commissioner Lauks. May I suggest we go through the budgets um, operating department by operating department and then also look at the capital improvement budget after that. That way we can kind of deal at it one at a time. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. So with that, I guess I'll start. Um, the governing board budget, which is page B8 in the budget book. The first topic is um, Citizens Academy. We currently don't have any money budgeted, and I know we've had some discussion about how we would do that and how many people would attend that, but we may want to consider um, possibly a budget revision later, but to fund the Citizens Academy. Any comments or suggestions? Well, how much was it before? This will be the first year we've offered a Citizens Academy. And you don't think that it needs any kind of budget? I think we will have minimal costs that we can um, handle through ad administration. If there will be a cost, it will be associated with some sort of um, celebration at the end of the year. Uh, I think the big thing is let's just get started and we can assess costs later. The costs associated with any kind of end of year celebration would be minimal. I'm sure that we could come before you with the budget transfer from another line item if that became necessary. All right, a couple other things I have on my notes is we did have some discussion, <coughs> at a, some discussion at a work session about possible laptops for the commissioners so we could reduce printing expenses and push the information out electronically. So that's something we may want to look at budgeting. And then also we had some discussion about possibly renovating the empty storeroom back here so we have a, a work area and a filing cabinet area where we could store material, meet with constituents, And I have no idea of an expense there. Well, we can start with something and then we can adjust it later on if need be. But yes, we have discussed um, laptops for the board prior, and I think that we should continue that discussion and make a decision about that. So right now we're just discussing it, I guess we can decide whether or not we want to put some money in there or possibly uh, do it at a later date. 
And then the uh, last item I add on here was just a clarification. We have strategic plan grants budgeted at $5,000. Just to clarify, that's the former nonprofit um, expenditure we used to have. And now any grants are going to be tied to the strategic plan. So I just want to clarify that. Um, I have a question about the memberships <clears throat> because the requested doesn't align with the recommended and I was assuming that a fee was a fee was a fee when it comes to Triangle J, the League, and the School of Government. So can I please have some clarification as far as that? Those memberships are based on population. So as our population changes, those fees will change. Okay, so the 2021 was $6,000, and so even though the population is supposed to have increased between 2021 and 2023, we're still within the bracket of the same monetary allotment for them. That is the hope. They don't give us um, an amount ahead of time. We just get a bill. Does the membership for the NCLN membership, does that also include um, other organizations within NCLM, like the BMO that I joined when I went? No, ma'am. Okay. It does not. Those are separate memberships. Okay. So where does that funding come from for separate memberships? Where does that, where, where does that funding come from for the separate memberships, ma'am? Travel and training. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And just for clarification, when um, numbers were put in or re recommended for the board, it was a recommendation for iPads, not for laptops. So if you're looking for laptops, the um, cost is about $1,200 per laptop. Thank you. Were those in here in this particular budget anywhere for the iPads? They were um, requested, but those are where the funds did not get transferred over when they were being moved. So there is not a number in the budget currently, if I'm remembering this correctly, Bobby. Is that correct? I believe that's correct, yes. Okay. And then another item of interest or note is we have $325,000 budgeted for professional services, which is primarily for legal fees. I would suggest we consider updating the contract or at least getting a little bit better handle on that expense. Oh, we absolutely need to update the contract. We haven't had a contract renewed in several years. Um, I don't feel comfortable with this $25,000 increase. Not and even a little bit. Um, so I would actually like to see that as we don't get to see exactly how it's used. We don't see invoices. And um, I have yet to, to have a full understanding of how they're used. Now, as you may or may not notice funding coming out of our pot coming out of uh, governor body pot I mean, it is pot of money in it's even when they use so it's one big pot mm -hmm. right okay i mean i don't right right now we're, we're budgeted for what two two fifty um i mean last year yeah it was 270 and this year they want 325. Well, last year was three hundred thousand, correct mm -hmm. with the amended budget amended gotcha Thank you. Yeah. Now we are in the process of getting um, a renewed a what? A renewed um, agreement, updating one. When we when we meet again as a uh, as a board, as far as evaluating the uh, town attorney, mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the subjects that we had mentioned that. We wanted to look at the agreement, update the agreement, um, and possibly have a, an evaluation system in place also. So, Just to bring me up to date, how long have we been using Robbins, if 
I mean, the current legal, how long we have, have they, we've been utilizing those guys? Well, Sam's sitting there right now. Sam, let me ask. Thank you. You know the year, Joe, it was 20. Do you have a microphone? I'm sorry, guys. Commissioner Miles, I'm not sure the exact year. I think it was around 2009 or 10. Thank you. Okay. And if we negotiate with the attorney, there are some things that we, we can negotiate with him as far as whether we want him to attend certain functions, uh, I've spoken to Eric about those, and he has said he's willing to negotiate those. And as a reminder, the meeting we had on March 17th, Eric did a, a presentation of the services with a breakout of how much for department heads, what was growth related, et cetera. <clears throat> and it is hard to budget legal services not knowing what legal services you need right. the next year. So it's kind of a shot in the dark, even at 325. Because we had some property acquisitions, we had a lot yeah. going on. We had we had a lot of, lot of, circumstances that we normally don't have. So, well, if we uh, keep this at three twenty-five, I definitely am interested in pursuing this renegotiation of rates and to figure out what exactly is being covered and <clears throat> determining how we want to proceed with with this attorney or I mean you're due for a review so come I guess since that's a employee that reports to us that would have to be a closed close session. session we'd have to schedule yes correct yes. Mm -hmm. all right so I guess the question is do we want to include iPads or laptops if we do, I would prefer laptops only because you can do so much more on it than just an iPad or tablet. I would say laptop as well. Okay. Do you have a preference, Ms. Harrison? I think laptops are just going to be better, especially with the documents that we're going to need to pull up. So. Okay. So that would be 1200 And Mayor, do you have a, a laptop currently or no? No. No. It's times. I mean, I have a personal. Right, right, right. So times times six yeah okay and then we also need to talk about some features for example do you want one that you're able to write on and make some notations in other words like a touch sensitive screen or is that even needed because we need to kind of come up with the specs okay Lisa what was the um, the twelve hundred dollars I think you said twelve hundred dollars would be for um, a basic laptop it would not be a touch screen or anything like that I mean that would cost us upwards of two or three thousand dollars for something like that um, to stick with our um, our contract that we have with Dell um, for security of our system so you know the recommendation would be to stick with Dell and to stick with you know a twelve hundred dollar machine May or may I make a recommendation for the board to consider? If they want, we can come back at the August work session with a list of options, and, and the board can make a budget adjustment at that time. So you, you can, they can get the features they want, and we will be able to identify where the revenue will come from to support that. But that's a consideration for the board to or take into consideration. we could just go ahead and put in $15,000 right now and decide what kind of laptop we want down the road and that way it'll already be in the budget uh, the board can identify that as an expense they'll have to identify the revenue as well um, the, they would have to identify t as an example taking 15,000 from general fund fund balance so if they do recognize the expense they'll have to recognize the revenue stream as well So thoughts? Um, I, I think that going ahead and moving it from or identifying the revenue stream at the 3,000, I, I do think that okay. that's something so do that you want, do. Do you want to put down for the 15,000, that just being like the 7,200 kind of times two, mm -hmm. and then 
identifying a revenue stream for it. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm okay. And then that. if there's any overage or if it's not as much, it'll just go back. It'll stay yep. in that line. Yeah. We can make a budget adjustment then. Okay. So we're marking up the material supply line to this 18.4. Yeah, 18.4 for materials and supplies. Mayor, one more thing. When the board does adopt a motion to adopt the budget, they'll have to tally all of these. They'll have to make, they'll have to reference all of the additions so that we can make sure that they get included. So far as the funding for the up upfit of those that office space, what do we decide on that? Just make sure I'm in the loop. Is that would we would we tackle that here or would that be capital? That would be a capital expense. So we'll, it, we'll, we'll work on that one. Thank you. It would be my recommendation to definitely do that one as a budget adjustment in August. We we can't possibly even guess at what that would cost. The laptops are a different matter. We got a better idea what that would cost, but again, it's the board's prerogative on what they want to do. Um, we do have office. There was an office over there that was supposed to be designated for our commissioners, correct? Does it still exist over there next to the? Yes, building? the board members have 24-hour uh, access to this facility. They can use uh, that room that you've identified. Mm -hmm. um, they also can use the meeting rooms just as long as they check with the clerk to make sure that that's not already scheduled for a meeting. In August. I just think the back room, I mean, I know you've got space, but I don't think all of us need individual offices, and I don't see why we couldn't share and sign up. Um, we know it was expensive to fix um, Lisa's area back there, and Lisa did the paint and all that, and this will have to be done and then there's lots of storage in there and we've got to figure out where the storage could go because it you know stuff you can't get rid of so you know i just think we need to you know take our time and make sure we get that right not jump right in yeah before we budget money maybe we all need to look at that spare office what spare office is this is this the one that to, is is right over there. at the very end of the hallway mm -hmm. no next to next to the uh, AV, AV. It's an office. Hall, if you come out of the conference room. Yeah, the, the door's always been closed. I've never seen in there. If there's room for... It was, when this building was redone, that was, re, that was done for the commissioners. None of us used it. Uh, but it's available, so I'd say, why don't we just fix that, and then you can have a sign-up sheet or whatever's necessary. Yeah, we can look at it. We may just need to buy some filing cabinets, and we can use that room as a starter, starting That's point. That's right. That's so exactly I guess it'll right. be a budget adjustment in August then, right? Is that how you wanted to go about yeah, it? Yeah, because I don't think that that's, it, it, would, it would make sense to try to allocate money to that when we don't know what, if, what or if the amount of money we would need to do that. So August for sure. If. Yeah, we and we may not be able to redo all of that. Maybe in the back, in the back if, if it comes to that, certain spaces and still share. I think it's wise to start off and use what's over here to see how well it gets used first right. before right. we spend more right. money. Right. Right. And we already have file cabinets that you could utilize that are empty currently. Um, I mean, and we can look at furniture if necessary. So what we just said was that we were going to check and see how the offices are going to be used, how the office will be used if we're going to utilize it before we go into building and revamping. Right. right. Yeah. So, so we can, we can address this in August. Okay. And as the mayor says, we can always use his office if he's not yeah. in it to meet. So. It's always open. That's all I've got on governing budget. Anybody else have anything? Anything else on the governing body? Okay. One last thing that we talked about briefly, I spoke with myself and Commissioner Bax, we was talking about cell phones. What are you guys' thoughts on cell phones, kind of like for us? Everybody else in this town gets their cell phone paid for. I'm not sure. Bobby, are there any employees that don't have a cell phone that's paid for? And how many? Uh, there's a handful, maybe... 61 currently have their cell phones paid for. Okay. 
and we have roughly 78, 79 employees okay. full time. So there's some that do not have it paid for. Okay. I just add that those are uh, stipends. They don't cover the whole bill. Like for for right, they're fifty dollars thirty five and fifty, and like me for example, that doesn't cover half of mine. So it doesn't cover the whole cell phone bill. Is what I'm saying. And some employees only get thirty five dollars. Not everybody gets fifty. How does that determine what they get? If I may ask. It depends on their position and their need for the phone. If um, you are a department head you get fifty dollars because you're pretty much on call 24 7 365. Okay. Um, if you are um, a maintenance worker in parks and recreation revisit the amount we're giving people and then i'll pass this policy out that the university uses because we are giving out taxpayer money to employees where there's even audits done of the cell phone bill to validate the phone is actually being used for business. And then the university system also ran into a problem where they were giving <clears throat> cell phone reimbursements to hourly employees. Mm -hmm. And the hourly employees were using their phones after hours and on weekends, and they were not properly recording the time. So we had a federal labor law violation where we had supervisors and employees potentially in trouble because they were not documenting their time worked. So one of the recommendations I make is we maybe use this policy as a starting point and then maybe write one for the town and determine what the appropriate reimbursement amount is because this plan does have one amount for just a voice account and then another reimbursement if you have data, which nowadays almost everyone needs data because you're on the internet, you're doing email, texting, et cetera. So just pass it around for everybody to read and we take a look at it and maybe write a new policy and update our policy. Because we all remember those days where we were paying over $100 a month for right. cell phone plans, and but it's drastically reduced. Thank you. So currently we don't have one for the town then, correct? Well, we need to decide whether or not the board needs a phone okay. or if that reimbursement's kind of in our stipend that we get paid. <clears throat> That's open for board discussion. I think we all have our personal phones, and I really don't see where the board members need them. Well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what I do for me. I have a personal line just for commissioners. So when that line rings, I know this for commissioner, commissioner type business. So I do have another line that I pay for completely every month just for that aspect of it. As we change it. But it will work for everyone in town, but I think it will be a good idea for the commissioners. But I think everyone in town needs to continue to have their phones like they have because they have them, but um, that's just what I think. Well, if it's a smartphone, you can add Google Voice. Right. Yeah. 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 But if they already have it and they're utilizing them and they're using them for more than what we're using ours for because they are employees, I don't think that Google Voice might be the best way for them to communicate. But if you so I'm not referencing <coughs> how I'm using my phone. I'm referencing how, how they're using their phone is different than how I'm using mine. Have you tallied up just like cell phone? If you looked up each department of cell phone, kind of like the tally, you probably took a look at $50,000 a year just in cell phones. If not, that, that's probably on the low side, I'm thinking. I think that's an effective use of the town's money for them to have. It's their about 30000 30000 Yes. Right. Thank you. So the appointed board's appreciation and recognition is $3,000, and then I believe that Parks and Rec has $2,000 set aside for theirs that is separate. So the $3,000 for appointed board appreciation and recognition is just for then the which which boards the planning board and the board of adjustments and can i have an understanding of of how that money is spent exactly well nothing is 
is spent right now the i think the thinking was just to give the board opportunities to recognize any appointed boards it could be ones that are standing um, but it could also be as an example we talked about earlier the um, the citizens academy you could transfer funds that the that's not an appointed board, but those are citizens that are coming front and center. Um, there's been discussions from singular commissioners about creating new commissions. Um, so there's a lot of latitude, but this has not been a fund that has recognized committees in the past. Did you have? Um. Can I have an explanation as to what equipment needs maintenance? We typically haven't had any need for that. We just have a little bit of uh, money to it for, let's say, poster machine. Um, knock on wood, it's not had any problems where we had to repair or replace it or uh, other devices such as printers and things like that. So the $500 from the FY22 budget, was it utilized or not utilized and did it go back into general fund? It has not been utilized yet, and yes, it will go. It will roll back into fund balance at that okay. point. Okay. And I think for me, I just want a little bit more explanation on the contract services. What kind of contract services? What What does that entail? Thank the you. The Wake County Tax Collection, or the other one? The other one. The other one. Uh, that's items that have to that are required. Uh, Software maintenance is about, I think, 10 or 10,500, I think, this year. And then some other items such as um, uh, copier, I mean, not copiers, but um, other equipment contracts, maintenance contracts. Thank you. And my question, and this may be a little conjecture in your behalf, but are retiree insurance benefits have climbed from the 57,431 in 2020 up to 85,000 uh, for 2023. Any feel for what that cost per person and what kind of escalation you think we'll see over the next couple of years as people retire? Well, the cost per person is around 6,000 per, uh, per retiree. And we kind of budget for about a 10% increase as far as uh, premiums every year. And the reason for the big jump is because we've had some retirees, uh, new retirees this year uh, that are coming online and then possibly uh, a couple more in the next year. And is this just from your department? This is everybody. This is everyone. It, it used to be in a special appropriations department, um, but it's been put into our, but it, it's for all retirees, police, fire, Parks and Rec, whichever they might be in, it just comes out of this line item. And that's payable until they turn age 65? Right. Okay. Uh, and then the ones hired before July 105, it would include uh, Medicare supplements, I want to say get on Medicare, and okay. prescription drug plan, and vision, et cetera. Hired before when? July 1, 2005. Mm -hmm. But those hired after that, it stops when they go on Medicare, yes. That's all I have. Any yep. other items? Anybody else? I'm ready to move to 430. Okay. Next one, I guess, in line is the admin administrative budget. I personally don't feel comfortable with any um, new positions that we haven't seen um, the job descriptions for, and that we don't have an understanding exactly what they're going to be. And I'd like to have an understanding of what DEI stands for under professional services. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. Okay. And that's primarily for training? Yes.
I'd like to remove the retention money, the $350,000. I don't think it's appropriate to give everyone in this municipality that works for us a retention bonus. There's been some performance issues that certainly, certainly have highlighted that I don't feel comfortable giving these people bonuses. But what I do feel comfortable in doing is allocating money to the police department and the fire department so that they can adequately deal with their compression. Thoughts? Because I think the re the re three hundred and fifty thousand and correct me if I'm wrong was that roughly five percent per person? No, the three hundred and fifty. Um, can you come up and talk about that? But this three hundred and fifty thousand was for every single employee, correct, Joe? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, the uh, 350000 was the program that the <coughs> deputy county manager came and spoke about based on a model um, that the county established. Uh, it provides $4,000 uh, to employees that make, I believe it's less than $65,000 a year. Yeah, I see Lisa nodding. Um, and it's uh, intended to, re exactly what uh, Commissioner Baxter just referred to, to retain employees to keep them working here. But it was a flat rate based on their income. And I'll add to that, it, it's a one-time payment. It is not related to compression. Compression is when you have salaries that are bunched up together and you try to provide more separation, <clears throat> which is included in this budget. The retention is just a one-time payment. And the county's model is if you agree to stay with us through December, you'll get this lump sum payment. So it's a one-time payment and it's not affiliated or associated with compression. It will, Correct. Not, it will not address compression. Correct. Um, Chief, what would be the amount that would need it, that the town would need to come up with to just address your department, taking into consideration the amount that Wake County is um, offering? If, if I'm understanding your, correct, your question correctly, there's um, the 4,000 that was proposed in the retention, about 1,500 of that Wake County would provide. Um, again, that doesn't address compression. We did address part of the compression within our budget uh, that we submitted. Correct. Um, so that's... But that's a 3% increase, right? Yes. Okay, so you're just, you're, you are addressing this incrementally. That's correct. That is correct. Okay. But as we know, <clears throat> we have employees in the police and fire department that are being underpaid according to the salary study by more than what the, your compression percentage will take into account for. That is correct. So what, what we have included within the, the budget here is an increase in starting salary, which does, it helps part of what you're describing because there are adjustments associated with, with increasing our starting salary. And then there are some minor compression adjustments as well. So we, we've tried to um, not necessarily fix the problem, but drastically improve within the budget that's been presented to you, if, that, uh, if, I'm, if I'm speaking clearly. Okay, so the total dollar amount, I'm sure you must have it, for if we take out of consideration the money that, that Wake County has offered to us, and I can't remember the exact number, if it was 29,000 or, or whatever that, right. that number that was, neighborhood. what would be the amount that if we were to follow that structure that the town would have to provide to, in total, not per person? Yeah, I don't, I don't know that I have the number that you're looking for. Okay. Um, because you're, you're looking to address the compression issue, get it where it should be. Is that, is that correct? I'm, I am looking to do two things. I'm looking to understand what, what it, the total would be for the town if we were to just follow the guidelines that Wake County presented us with a few months ago. Two months ago? Um, and then, yes, 
as far as I'm concerned, I'd rather use this retention, what is considered on this retention line item, in a more valuable way, and that is actually to pay the employees that are putting their lives on their line every single day and actually in, in high performance situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I guess the, the, the budget you see in front of you, we, independent of the retention bonus, mm -hmm. we have included some money to do salary adjustments to improve both our compression and our salaries um, through the raising of our starting salary. We would raise existing employees, so that would help us get towards that mark. And then the, uh, some of the compression uh, increases are included as well. So it, I guess what I'm saying is some of that is already included, mm -hmm. separate and apart from what you see in, in the retention program that's proposed here. Okay. Um, just so that we have it out there and on record, anytime you receive a retention bonus, it is taxed at a higher rate. Any kind of bonus is taxed at like 47%. And so it doesn't make sense as far as I'm concerned for the town to participate in any kind of large scale bonus program because it means that we are putting out money that the employees will never see. That money will go towards taxes instead of actually in the pockets of the employees where it belongs. And so I would rather make meaningful salary adjustments to employees rather than just hand out a bonus that if we give them a thousand dollars they're only going to see five hundred and thirty dollars of i think that when you when we talk about giving retention bonuses and we talk about the value of each one of our workers or each person that works for the t for, works for the town i think that it is an unfair assessment to say that we have some employees that are more valuable and deserve more than others. While I understand that we have employees who risk their lives and put their lives on the line, we also have employees who who are a part of the administration that helps them to get to where they have to put their lives on the line. Or we have employees that are sacrificing and supporting them. So to say, so to devalue any part or any member of our staff when it comes to retention bonuses, I think that that's a very um, unfair assessment to every employee that works for the town. And while I understand that, of course, what Chief um, Perry does, of course, what Chief Boykin and their teams do is very important um, to place value in saying that these people are not valuable enough to receive retention, then how much more are we gonna pay when these people don't feel valued and then we have to replace them with someone who might be less valuable and then we have to pay for training and new uniforms and all of that other stuff. So I think we need to be careful in, in how we value our staff or the lack thereof valuing them. Well, I can understand that, and so can you? I, I can actually, and so I think that that maybe what we need to consider is just not giving a retention at all, so that no one feels undervalued. So, so just because we get to one section, that means we we don't value the other employees that we were saying. That's, that's, that's what she is. Saying. No, that's what. She, that's that's what not what saying. I said, but that's what was said. So I just want to make sure that we're clear in our valuing of our staff you know it, i, I want to make sure that if we're gonna if we're gonna value some you know it was we were saying that you know some we clearly see that some people don't deserve it or we've had issues and i think that when you look at the overall grand scheme of things we don't need to sit here and place what we believe what we see as our measure of value for our employees because i don't think that it's a fair assessment considering what you know. What, 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 you I, know. what, I, what I take an assessment of is this. We, have, we got a pay chart for all the staff, town staff. And in our town staff, they're hiring, to what I understand, according to other municipalities, they're paid pretty well. Their pay scale is pretty good on chart with everybody else. Our fire and police, we know are down. We had a fireman stand last meeting and tell that they're down. 
But if somebody has information that's different, we don't have a comparison. So what I'm basing off what I have found is that our, our town staff is doing pretty good. So we're paying the, the town staff, to my understanding. It may be something I see Lisa kind of nodding her head, but I definitely would love a comparison sheet with that with other municipalities, just as we did for the elected officials. That would be greatly appreciated. So I can make a sound decision on it. Right. And I don't. And what I'm saying is not anything to do with their salaries. Okay. It's their retention. That is the one time. If I'm. Is that what you said? It's a one-time. Yeah, so let me, let me revisit Wake County's model as a way to illuminate what I think the board's options are. So Wake County is offering retention bonuses to all of their employees, all of them. Right. They have offered to those departments that provide services that they provide through a cost share arrangement the Zebian Fire Department to pay them as well, but only that percentage that they provide for the as part of their cost share. So, of the total bonus, they would, in our case, get 38. They would give 38 percent. What's in the budget is to cover the full amount for the fire department to make it equal what Wake County is getting, and also to provide that retain, retention bonus to all employees. So, Wake County, all employees get it. They've offered it to cost share departments, Zebulon being one, but only a percentage of that, of that uh, $4,000. So options are um, reject, turn down the retention offer, accept it uh, just for uh, fire department employees at that proportional amount, or match it for the fire department, or offer it to all employees. And what's in the budget is for all employees. Thank you. Now, to summarize or clarify, they, you were saying it's $4,000 if the employee makes less or $65,000 or less. Is there a sliding scale for those above 65? And what is the scale? There is, and I can't recall them offhand. I think it's 3500 for like 65 to 100, and then above 100 is 3000 roughly around. It's, it's three. Brackets. Three brackets. That's why I keep him by my side. Mm -hmm. and I think the county did it in three installments. I think March, June, and September, maybe. Obviously, we, we haven't done anything yet. So we, I think the proposal is in is it one or two. Possibly one or two yeah. installments. We, we we would we would bring forth a policy, but we're not going to bring forth the policy until if you. Or, we, unless we were you hoping that this would have come before us in a work session, like you had indicated prior to this. It, it did come before you in a work session. There was two work session topics on this. And once again, they only have to be here through December to get the first payment, and then what about the other two payments? Well, that's if we. So Wake County provided in three installments. If Zebulon budgeted this money, they could do it, they could arrange it however they wanted to. So an idea would be if this passes, give an initial install, uh, installment in July, July 1st, and give the next installment, so just two installments in December. But it doesn't have to be that way. Okay. So if you could refresh me, give me the four options again, if you would, please. Okay, uh, tur turn away Wake County's money so nobody gets anything except just the amount of money that Wake County is offering. So that, that means that just the fire department employees would get it, but they would not get the 4,000. They would just get the proportional share, which is around 38%. So that's option two. Option three is to match the the county's offer to the fire department employees, so they would get the 4,000. Uh, Wake County would get a, a portion, Town of Zebulon would give the remaining portion, but again, that's just for fire department employees. And then the fourth option is what's budgeted in the proposed budget, which is all employees get the retention. What's your pleasure? Are there any thoughts? 
Comments? I think we should give it to all employees. I'm personally good with just fire. I'm good with just fire. I think that all employees should get it, but, you know. Yeah, and, and as a state employee with the university, we got 2.5% last January, and we're set to get 2.5% in July, mm -hmm. um, which is across the board. But um, remind the, the town employees, based upon university salaries, are very well paid and have a phenomenal med medical plan, far better than what the state employees have. And it's truly a golden Cadillac plan. So just a reminder, they're very fortunate. Correct. Very they fortunate. Are, they may have a good ins insurance plan or something, but they can't keep their family on it. They can't no, afford it. No, it's only for the employee. So, that's correct. you know, that's sort of scary. If you get a family, it's another big expense. Yes. Yeah, it is. Oh, we can discuss that further down the road in the budget. But as for now, anything? But we need to approve the amount in here as far as the budget is concerned. So for fire, just what is that amount? Chris, you may have said, I may have missed it. The amount for just fire, just so I can know. Well, if it's just accepting what Wake County offers, then the town doesn't have to pay anything. But it will just be a proportional share of that 4000 So what's the 38% we're talking about? That was the other The 38% is the current cost share arrangement that the town has with Wake County. So we get reimbursed or covered at 38% of our costs or our, our, our expenses to provide service. And we use the 4,000 as the base because that's what the county is gonna do with their employees. Correct. We could use 2,000 as a base. We don't have to use the 4,000. Correct. Right. And so Mayor, what I, I'm sorry. Yeah, so you got anywhere between zero all the way up to 4,000 per employee. And I do like the idea of treating everybody fairly. So a recommendation would be when you all are done with your discussion, a motion, you'll be in a position to make a motion to adopt the budget. And my recommendation would be is that you include all of these things that you want to change. So as an example, add the laptops or add or not add or proportionally add retention. So you don't have to necessarily, I think it's good for you all to have a discussion, but you don't necessarily have to make a decision. In fact. You don't make a decision until you adopt the budget. So again, when it comes time to adopt the budget, you all will vote on the different caveats or exceptions to the budget that's in front of you. But I think that we need to hash this out now. I mean, for me, calling something a bonus, it's like we are wasting taxpayer dollars because those dollars that we are giving to an employee, a proportion of those, they don't, it doesn't get to the employee. And that's where I have the problem. I would rather make an adjustment to salaries using that money. I'm not suggesting you don't hash it out now. What I'm saying is it's not official until you adopt the budget. And if, if when you all vote on this, you're, someone is going to have to make the motion, something to the effect of how much of this retention they're going to want to see in the budget, and then you all will collectively have to vote on it. So absolutely hash it out now. But the vote isn't until you consider the budget for adoption. So a quick question, maybe just, this may be a different subject. I see a line item say employee appreciation program. What does that consist of? Is that something that I kind of was associating it to as a bonus, is that correct? Or can you speak to that? I can. Um, employee appreciation deals with um, things like we did when we had the food trucks out back. So we brought them in and it paid for that when we take them and the whole staff to a Mudcat game and their families, okay. um, trying to do things like that. The Christmas luncheon mm -hmm. or the breakfast at Christmas, we give uh, certificates for turkeys and hams. Um, so it, it encompasses those things where we're appreciating them for what they do. Thank you. Along those same lines, the safety committee budget went from $1,167 in 2021 all the way up to 11,500 for this current year 
what's that increase of ten thousand dollars being used for um, for safety some of the things that they did um, they wanted to do some professional development and as well as bring in um, to uh, purchase a software program that will track the safety program so for example if someone were to have an accident it the employees or whoever's on the scene can take pictures they upload it they put everything in the system and it's all tracked from the very beginning versus trying to remember everything that's going on or have pictures and those kinds of things um chris perry am i missing anything in that because chris perry and chris bissett and myself um did a demo with this particular um company and um yeah, the only thing I'll add, the um, software for the safety committee, um, the safety committee does look at all workplace injuries. So the software that Lisa's talking about handles as far as tracking what caused the workplace injuries or were they preventable, and that will, that will steer the prevention efforts. But at the same time, it handles all of our necessary um, state and um, mm -hmm. required reporting, injury reporting, OSHA, Department of Labor reporting. So that the software package that they're looking for is to cover that. Do we have that many employee injuries every week or every month? The number, I do not know the number. I would, I would say three or four a month, but I'm, Lisa, maybe would, she could speak to that more. I would say three or four a month as far as an injury, not necessarily a workers' comp injury. How many workers' comp injuries do we have in a given year? Um, this past year, I would say we've probably had maybe eight with that were, um, several were minor. Um, we've had a couple that were a little bit more um, intense. And so the number of OSHA recordables for last year was? Probably, I wanna say six, if I'm not mistaken, but I don't do that paperwork any longer, so that is a Chris Bissett question. Yeah, you know, the intent of the safety committee was to gear their safety programs to potential injuries and what is actually causing employee injuries. At this point, there's no mechanism um, short of, you know, Excel spreadsheet to track what is causing the injuries and the software package that they, they would like to purchase takes care of that in the reporting in one, in one package. So would we say that the injuries are increasing over the years or decreasing or on average? So when it, yeah, so when it comes to injuries themselves, we really don't know because we've never really tracked them in the past. All we know is exactly what Lisa reported, those workers' comp type injuries, um, what the safety committee wants to really look at when somebody smashes a finger or, or twists an ankle. That, and they're probably bad examples, but stuff that may not meet the workers' comp threshold, um, but stuff we want to track and, and they want to zero in and try to stop those from happening. Right, okay. Thank you. Yeah, having done this in a previous career, there's normally an accident report filled out for each accident, and then typically a safety committee sets down and looks at those at least monthly and takes proactive action immediately to drive those down. So I don't know if we need a software program with, what, 100, less than 100 employees? Yeah, and that's exactly where the safety committee wants to go is what you described. But we do have an accident report form that is filled out, so we are collecting the data, I not, assume. Not a standardized form. No. Oh, for crying out loud. Yeah, that's, the first, that's the first place you need to start is a paper form where you collect. We have a paper form for accidents. Um, I think we are in the infancy of having a safety committee and a safety um, person of Chris Bissett. This is the first time the town has had this person. Um, normally there is a risk manager for a lot of places that handle this piece of it. Um, and we're trying to put policies in place and best practices in place, and this is one of them. Um, and could it be done on paper? Yes, it could be done on paper, um, but the paper does not do the reporting. With this program, it can report out to all the OSHA, all the paperwork, everything that has to be done through that thing versus having to do it all by paper. So yes, we do have a form. Yeah. Um, is it always being filled out? I don't know. I can't answer that question. 
I don't know if we're large enough actually to have a software to do this when we don't even have a paper system that seems to be working or being reviewed. And is this expenditure one time or is this going to be something that like we're paying $8,500 a year to upkeep the software and... Is it ongoing? It's ongoing. Thank you. I, I didn't know the answer to that question. Sorry. Okay. Thoughts? Yeah, I, I would recommend we hold off on this until we get a paper system in place and track it. And if it looks like we need it in a couple months and they can justify it, we'll buy it. Otherwise, it seems unnecessary. Yeah, I'd like to see. I, I, that's fine. I think that's fine. For me, if I could get a little better understanding of the wellness program as well, please. So um, the wellness is part of safety as well. They kind of work hand in hand, but um, they will. They have done things like um, making sure that we have um, understanding of the heat. What do you do to make sure you don't get overheated? How do you um, sun safety those particular pieces? And they're provided with maybe hand sanitizer for things, uh, sunscreen and, and those pieces, hydration packets, um, wellness uh, as well when it comes to um, wellness baskets. So eating healthy, bringing in those baskets. We bring in people from Wake Med to um, do classes on nutrition they do uh, they offer classes on secession for various things you can have a physical we'll bring in a bus for a physical we have brought in a mammogram bus um, so it is try we try to be holistic about it thank you you're welcome Well, with that, it looks like we're back to retention bonus. <clears throat> well, Larry, what are your thoughts on this? I've given mine. We know Jessica's and, and Beverly's and, and Clinton. What was your thought right. just to do the fire? Do the fire, but I just want to know when I say that, that I'm not taking from the value of any employee here in Zeppelin. That's for sure. I want that to be made known that that word you guys use there, devalue, somebody's, somebody's more value than other. I don't look at it that way. I'm just assessing what's been given to me, the four options. So, because initially we had said we we're going to fund public safety, which we are fire and police. I mean, fire and police, which it, the options, that's not an option we can do. The discussion we had earlier would be to just fund fire and police, which I was on board with that, definitely. I now, know. given the option that I have, I'm looking at just fire. I mean, I don't take one, I, I take everybody, you know what I'm saying? I value everybody here, because I know it takes everybody, as you stated, to get one to the other, so. Police couldn't do theirs without Lisa or Joe or whomever, but I do look at it like that, just to make that known. I guess I'm leaning towards 50% or $2,000 retention bonus versus 4,000 and for everybody. You guys good with that? You guys start on that? That's fine. Ms. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Okay, I'm good that way we still get the county money and everyone's treated fairly, fairly. 2000 across the board, right. regardless of salary. Right. I like that. Thank you, Larry. I like that. Did we sit back? That's fine. Okay. But I will say that I would like to make sure that the money that we have to retain our emergency services personnel, we should be working actively to get them what they need to reduce the compression problem that we have. The salary line item in both the fire and police department address both the starting salary and the compression. But not entirely. First step, I guess. I guess. All right. You want to move on to planning? Right. Planning budget. The 
I guess I'll start off with a question. Um, this is the only budget that has uniforms budgeted? Um, I think that... I th well, other than fire other police. Other than fire police. Yeah. The majority of that actually goes for code enforcement to make sure that our code enforcement officer is properly uh, uniformed to represent himself in a manner that's uh, worthy of the town. Okay, thank you. So we have one, and he's going to be purchasing a thousand dollars worth of what t-shirts jackets is that what is that what you're saying that is the majority of it the other staff a uh, couple they usually get two polo shirts per year um, for when they're meeting with uh, developers uh, meeting with folks downtown something with the town logo on it they'd be characteristic of many other community development or planning departments within the region can you explain why the East Wake bus service is under your budget and why it's not elsewhere? That one predates me. However, it is um, our communications interaction with um, Go Triangle, Go Raleigh, and Campo go through our department. Okay, thank you. For me, can you break down professional services a little bit, that 45,000, please? Sure. Um, Portions of that go to the annual funding for all the different software packages that we use, including IDT, Bluebeam, um, our GIS software, additionally outside consultants. So uh, if we have to subcontract with a development services engineer or other for services beyond our capabilities at that time frame. Um, additionally, the uh, we have an iPad that has cell service for our code enforcement and inspections. Um, those monthly charges come out of that as well. Um, there's a couple other minor items, but those are the majority of them. Yeah, approximately a third of that, a um, little over a third of that is dedicated towards um, outside review agencies such as if we have to subcontract a development services engineer. So with this, okay. I see your cell phone section is 2200. Is there a reason why yours is higher than kind of like for you only have what staff size six? I think what your staff size in planning is? Um, we have six full time employees right now. Uh, that there are only three individuals in our department that get any sort of stipend, um, mm -hmm. so less than 50% of my staff, or 50%, um, not including, um, which does not include our uh, downtown associate community coordinator, myself and Mead Bradshaw are at the $50 rate, and then our code enforcement officer is at the $35 rate. Um, unlike a lot of the other emergency services folks, we don't have a radio in our truck, um, so his only line of communication is his cell phone. Thank you. Any other thoughts on Department 490? Beverly? Yeah, I, budget. I, I just had one more question. The overtime, understanding the overtime, how does overtime, is that like when, the, I'll let you tell me what the overtime is. I'm just kind of curious when I saw the 3,000 for that, what does overtime consist of? You got? Um, realistically, the only time that that would really be used is for emergency search situations, such as uh, the hypothetical tornado that may eventually, okay. or actually did come through downtown. Um, we were able to absorb some of those costs for additional permits, for emergency issuance of permits, so folks could get re, um, reconnected. We were able to accommodate that during regular business hours as opposed to having to stay open late for contractors to be able to apply for those. Um, it's more of a safety net for those emergency situations. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike.
I have one question on the um, accreditation. We are going to be hiring a full-time member to help you through that process. What are the thoughts on the timeline to get through accreditation, and then what about that staff member? The, the um, CLIA, the accrediting body, gives you 36 months. I think somewhere between 24 and 36 is realistic. Um, and we'd be looking at bringing that employee on around the beginning of January. And then at the end of 36 months or accreditation, what would your plans be? It's a continual process. It's something that requires daily maintenance. And so the person would continue serving in that role um, in addition to the responsibilities associated with the evidence room. Is that, is the, under the contracted services other where the accreditation is listed, is that going to be what we're to expect as a price tag, or do, is that going to decrease after we reach full accreditation in 36 months? It will, so that's kind of the initial startup fee, and then it would be roughly $4,200 annually. Okay, but for the first three years, it will be what looks like maybe $200,000? No, no. That contract services is... I, I know that it, it wraps in other things. Lots how, of other things, yes. Yeah. So $11,000 startup cost. It's just for the accreditation. Yes. Okay, well then could you explain a little bit more of what is contained in the contracted services then? I thought it was just the accreditation. All right, so that's um, our CAD service uh, where we're dispatched through the computer system um, and uh, we pay service or we pay for services through the city of Raleigh to actually do the dispatching. Um, we pay Wake County for use of our 800 megahertz radio system, the SBI to have access to the um, DCI services. Digital Ally uh, provides services for our in car cameras. FMRT runs our um, background, uh, medicals, drug screening uh, for new hires, League of Municipalities, we, we do uh, random drug screening with them. Um, we have a couple of different criminal justice information systems. Uh, we're a member of a uh, special project with the Triangle J and See, Power DMS would be where we have a grant for them right now, but they do fall under contract services. We just have a zero item in there. Flock would be the camera system that we're looking to um, grow the license plate reader system. ATS uh, is a um, roadside message board software system. Um, wellness exams for the staff, this is, a, this is an addition to, this is a new program, wellness exams. It's valued at roughly $6,000, but it would allow our staff to have um, stress tests annually. Cardiac uh, issues are one of the number one killers of police after retirement, and so we're trying to improve their health. So that was an additional program. And then the last thing is Smith Rogers, which is a uh, law firm that specializes in law enforcement services and we pay them about $5,200 a year. And so because the 911 contracted services and the Smith Rogers are both zeroed out, that's just moved up to contracted services other? Yeah, we combined them all into one line item. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. For me, um, you briefly mentioned earlier, I may have missed it. The flock camera idea, $5,000 so $5, for that. Could you break that down for me a little bit, please? Um, so flock is a camera system that provides license plate reading technology, and we would deploy the cameras in areas where we believe they would help us um, solve crimes, and it's a $2,500 fee per camera annually. So Say we're going to keep going. This is a cycle. We'll do it every year. Have to renew every year. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chief Boykin. The body camera line. Can you? 
is that we don't need any more? Like, I'm just... So, um, my, my, one of the goals that I have with our budget um, is to create a regular replacement cycle on all the different pieces of equipment that the officers are wearing. Uh, so we'll move to a point where there's a smaller amount of money in that line every year. Okay. Um, there were a couple of different items like that. Tasers were one. And I took these different pieces of equipment and put them all into service equipment. Okay. And all of those items now on a regular replacement schedule, instead of having a $20,000 project to replace all of them at one time, we'll replace four or five a year. Okay, thank you. Is, is there a reason why we stopped funding a Zebulon night out? Uh, COVID impacted Zebulon Night Out, and it's absolutely something that we'll be looking to do in the future. Okay. Can you tell me when the separation allowance is going to end? I have to look to Bobby on that. Uh, that ends when they turn 62. So it doesn't make any difference that he's now got a high paying job elsewhere. We still have to pay that until he's 62. Correct. Thanks. There are, uh, that includes three people. Uh, okay. Right there. And that 58, eight. Okay. Yeah, I applaud you for getting the uh, license plate reading cameras, but I would still like to see some cameras, for example, downtown, so you could monitor that in the evening because we have had some issues down there, as well as some of the major intersections. And as you know, some of the cameras we looked at were very sophisticated, and it gives you eyes and ears both places you were not, not at that you can actually see in the car. So actually considering adding some money to your budget for those cameras. For me, just kind of curious with the flock, kind of like I say, is there a certain area that we kind of like, do we have regulations or policies set in place where and when they will be used? Because I can see that being a tool that can be, I mean, just kind of curious, is there rules and regulations where we will place a flock here, there, or whatever it may be? Is there something set in place? Mm, I wouldn't say that there are rules and regulations that guide where we would place them. We, um, for example, we have two flock cameras purchased right now. They are expected to come in sometime in August. Okay. We've identified um, an area in the city where we believe if we deploy the cameras, we would have a good chance at improving our uh, ability to identify offenders. The locations are right out here at 264 and Arundel. So they'll go on either side of the overpass okay. and it'll catch north and southbound traffic. Um, and this honestly is in response to the number of um, thefts and, and such in the Wakelon. So is that that camera that I see currently on that bridge, uh, that's, one, that's a flock camera now? No. We, okay. We haven't received the cameras yet. We're not due to get them until August. Thank you. Where, where is your um, compression adjustment located? Just in salaries? It's built into, yes, salary. So in the salary line item, there's an mm -hmm. additional $117,000 to address the career development plan, which will um, significantly impact our compression issues. The last year we had uh, BLT or BLET sponsorships was 2021. Is that something that would actually help you in recruiting? Um, I, I'm, I'm going to share my opinion on something here. I would say roughly 50% of BLET students fail out. It is a, it's risky sending someone to BLET beyond them having a stellar background. There has to be some assurances that they're going to be able to be successful with the academics and the physical portion of it. I am 
completely open to sending somebody to BLET, but it has to be just the right person that I would feel comfortable enough that we're not going to invest four months of salary, five months of salary, and have them fail the state exam. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, I think it could be hugely beneficial, um, and it's, it's, oh, it's been on the table for me, um, since the day I got here to use that if I needed to, and just haven't found myself in a position to feel comfortable using it yet. Good answer, let's keep it on the table. Just curious, what is that comfort level, just so I can get a better understanding, is there some, like certain criteria, physical, mental, or whatever it may be, that for you personally, as you stated, just what is that comfort level, if I may understand? Say, say that again? What is that comfort level for you? I don't know that I can define it. Um, I have been involved in police hiring for 21 years okay. and um, have put a lot of th people through the BLET program. I instruct in the BLET program. And one of the things that I have um, talked about since I came to work here is that we want to hire the right people, that you hire for character and train for competency. But you have to find someone who has the capacity to reach the competency. And I, I don't know that I can define that for you. Um, it's just something that we're ideally looking for. Right. Thank you. Any other questions on the police budget? No. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. 5.30 then? Fire? Yeah, fire budget B-13. I know that we've discussed this in years past, Chief, um, but I would really like to see your other fringe benefits line item renamed to something that is more descriptive to at what it actually covers, sure. which I know is like uniforms and pizza and things for the volunteers and the juniors. That, that is correct. But <clears throat> fringe, other fringe benefits, um, that, that line item name has probably been that for 20, 25 years, but you're right, it could be very, it could be very um, more accurately named, but it is, it typically relates to volunteers through their programs, their uh, monthly meal um, uh, membership in the North Carolina State Firefighters Association. Those are the kind of things that is paid for uh, under the other fringe benefits. Um, I would say the, the vast majority of that is for our volunteer workforce. Now, is your salary next to it says adjustments. Is that your pay compression adjustment? I see that you've got the career ladder um, as a separate line item as well. That is correct. So the, the salary line item um, starts off with a, an, an adjustment to the starting salary um, and then has corresponding increases to our employees that would um, address a lot of what, what you heard about on um, at the public hearing the other night. Um, so those are those salary adjustments. And we did work to include some of the compression adjustment between those uh, various jobs. Um, did we fix it? Uh, I think this is a good first step. I, I definitely do. And what, what is the dollar amount that is going towards the um, compression adjustment? So the total salary adjustments related to it is about, Bobby, make sure I'm right, is about $250,000. Um, the compression piece of that is, is a much smaller chunk of that. I would guess about 20. But 20,000 uh, mm -hmm, of the compression um, because we were able when we make the increase in the starting salary that has um, quite a domino effect. So that will cause quite a few uh, salary corrections. And then the compression, we look to spread out a little bit between those positions where when one person gets a raise, they're not all, all of a sudden making more than their superior. So we try to create a little bit of distance in between those two positions. Well, I know that we've got fellows that have been working for 10, 12 years. And I mean, I knew this before Mr. Todd even came in to talk to us the other night that they could, that these guys can go a town over and make 
fifteen sixteen thousand dollars more that is correct and saying that we are just adjusting that we're just tackling this with twenty thousand dollars it doesn't seem like that's, that's right. even scratching the surface since since we've got the salary the big starting salary piece and the compression both are working towards the common good they're getting people salary adjustments that they need so it's that that full um and um, I, I keep looking towards Bobby because when you look at our overtime and how that, that salary change affects, um, Bobby had a better number. It was somewhere in the $250,000 in salary changes for the, our, our various employees. And so we are now hiring at a rate that is more consistent across the county, but that, mean, that doesn't mean that somebody that's working for 10 years isn't feeling that salary breathing down their neck because somebody that has zero days in your you know, organization is making very, very close to what somebody that te is working 10 years. Like that's really the compression that I'm talking about right. and that I would like to see adequately addressed and adjustments made for. And, and we are just in part of that, that is for sure. We're, we're gonna take that, that you know, if you recall, I used that illustration of the little kid step, step. So we're going to take the whole line and move them up. So that will help our incumbent employees. They'll see increases that will get them more, uh, more appropriate for the, the workforce they're in. Um, so we, you will see some of those adjustments throughout the workforce. Your requested uh, cell phone stipend was 13500 and the recommended is reduced to 9070 how many people get reimbursements and how much do they get in the fire department? Okay, so every, every employee within the fire department gets a cell phone reimbursement, the stipend. Um, the supervisory personnel get the $50 that Lisa spoke of earlier. Um, the non-supervisory get the 35. Um, what's also included and why you see a, a decrease in that, all of our mobile data is included in that as well. So every one of our vehicles has mobile data to transmit CAD data. Um, back and forth as well as um, automatic vehicle location services. So part of what you see there, um, the, the amount comes down because we share that cost and there's a more efficiencies um, for the county to carry that service. Mm -hmm. And that's, we, we reduced it because we were able to save some money by actually purchasing that, that service through the county. Um, did I answer all your questions about the stipends? So, yeah, so each fireman gets a beeper with the information plus a cell phone reimbursement. Uh, yes. So they get a beeper that gives them some information. Uh, the cell phone, the cell phone comes through with mapping information and has increased um, information, more, much more information than what they would see. Pretty much, nature of the call and the address is all they receive from the beeper. Um, update information, mapping information, which um, with the growth of our town has become very, very helpful. Um, not just a street name, but where that street is at. So there's much more information comes through the cell phone. Could you break down volunteer pay for me, Chris? So I can get yes, a better sir. understanding. Thank you. So the, the volunteer pay is a pay per call rate. Um, it's about $9 per call. Um, it's intended not to be compensation. Um, back when it was established by the commissioners 20, 25 years ago, it was intended to offset expenses. So that $9 a call um, is intended to pay for gas, pay for their expenses associated with responding to the call. Um, we very intentionally don't try to compensate them because the idea of whether they, are they truly volunteers or not comes up. So it's, it's more of a reimbursement of, of uh, expenses associated with responding to calls. How is that tracked when a volunteer comes up? Is there like a database or something you have like, okay, Joe Smith is here today so or something? Every, every incident report we complete, we track who responds, whether that's responding to the station to be ready for another call or actually responding. And then once a year, we tally up those calls and then they're paid based on that. All right. So it's a one-time payment per year? Didn't that's you correct. At Christmas right. time, that's correct. How about your um, re recruitment and retention? Fund $2,600. The recruitment and retention, probably another one that may could be named a little bit better. That is our junior firefighter program. Okay, so everything you see in re recruitment retention is is aimed at those the junior firefighters. Okay. And last but not least, the contract services, the fifteen thousand there. Can you give me just a generic contract services for us is not necessarily not necessarily something that has a contract associated with it, but something that's a reoccurring payment, whether it's an exterminator. Our biggest 
chunk of contract services go to our IT stuff. For example, our records management system is all an internet-based system. We pay a, an annual fee for that. Um, our scheduling, staff scheduling system, which extends to when our volunteers pull duty crews, we pay an annual fee for that. So the majority of contract services are those IT technology services that we use. With that said, IT, what level does Ron help you guys for our IT specialists? What level do you guys? Ron handles all of our infrastructure, for example, the, the network, the server, the desktops, um, pretty much the only thing Ron doesn't do for us is probably those, those um, technology software packages that we handle, and then our um, computers within our vehicles are all maintained by Wake County. But every, everything else will be under Ron's purview. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Chris, so I'm assuming that when you say the medical exams, these are the exams that are, that are given when they're cycling through as they're fighting fires, or are these something different? Those are something different. The um, medical exams or fit for duty exams um, provided to every firefighter once a year um, to make sure they are, are of sound health to be a firefighter. Okay. Um, and if we put on a hire someone or we put on a new volunteer, they receive a medical exam before um, they are officially hired or what have you. It's, it's a prerequisite for not only employment, but also for being a volunteer. Did we just not have that extensive of a medical, medical exam in 2020? Or so, was it billed somewhere else? So in 2020, um, we were doing a program where we were having medical exams in June. Um, and then because of scheduling with COVID, we, we, we did it in the following July, so we missed a year. Okay. So that's, that's what it, the, uh, our NFPA standard allows us 14 months to get those. And we, we got every bit of the 14 months during COVID. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Does anyone have any more questions for the fire department budget? I think we're good. Okay. Thank you. Parks and Rick. Start off with a really simple one. Uh, artesian market part-time salary zeroed out. So no plans for any part-time assistance there. Just going to use full time people? Um, <clears throat> so, this line item was originally titled Farmer's Market, and so um, we relocated all of the um, Farmer's Market part time staff to the special programs events and events. Okay. Line item. Right. Told you it was a simple one. So it's moved to special events. Correct? Yes. Correct. Okay. And so where is is there an area where it's broken out how much is going to be allocated? You wanna know how much is allocated to mm -hmm. the artisan market operations and part-time staff or I guess both because there's two there's two areas where it says it moved to special events got $7,500 in the special events line for the artisan market for the for part-time staff no ma'am that's just for the special events line the part-time staff around 
Yeah, I believe it was around 25. Okay, and so when there are events that are happening at the artisan market, but not necessarily brought forth because it's the artisan market, I'm just gonna use the Juneteenth event they're happening in tandem. Mm -hmm. um, where does that where does that money get pulled from? Because I'm assuming that there is a cost associated. They're all coming from, the, that's why we put it to the program and events line, is because there are a lot of things that we do that kind of cross over. Um, so the, the, the funds for the artisan market are in the programs and events line. Okay. Athletic team uniforms um, have gone up to 28 five. Mm -hmm. And is that because you're going to be providing more appropriate outfits across the board, especially for um, girls sports? Or what is, what is your thought there? Increase is related to the increase in participation. But I sense that there's a different question in there. This thin, disgusting shirt is my daughter's softball jersey that she, that they cannot wear without a shirt underneath because it exposes their bras. Okay. And at an age where they're at, that is very embarrassing. I've talked about this before. Um, if you look at any of the boys' sports, they have legitimate appropriate looking baseball shirts. And I would like to see a shirt that mirrors the boys' shirts for the girls' teams. Well, that's the, if, I, I've not heard that complaint. Well, I can, I can certainly send folks your way. That um, would be great. Okay. That's the best way for us to, to hear those concerns is if they share it with us. Because um, that's not something that I have heard, and I've looked through, I've received that concern um, prior to this meeting, and I even went back and looked through our evaluations and did not see it. So if that is a concern, I've already talked with staff to just make sure that we are evaluating our uniform, that we are looking to other uh, municipalities to see um, what's being offered, and so we will absolutely evaluate that. Okay. And, and the uniforms and, that the that the ladies are currently me. wearing are they across the board? Like for you said, other municipalities are they like regular with the other municipalities of what they're wearing? They are, are we not different? right now. As far as I understand, they've been consistent. I have reached out to some of my colleagues today mm. because I heard that this question was coming um, to understand what if there were differences, what they were. Okay. And, All right. Mm -hmm. So you've addressed, you've reached out to Archer's Lodge and to Corinth Holders. Their uniforms are very different than, than the girls' softball teams. And if that is the case, and you're going to make adjustments so that they are more consistent, um, is that going to is there going to be an increased need in your uniform line? There may be, but I mean I'm in the in the time frame that I was given this information and was able to do a full assessment, um, it, I couldn't tell you exactly what that would be. And so I would, in the grand scheme of things, I don't think it's going to move the needle that much that if I have to do a line item transfer to, in order to you know, make an adjustment if that's needed, then that's okay. what we would do. Okay, just wanna make sure that there is enough if the need is there. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, comment suggestion with the hometown atmosphere mm -hmm. is I really like the idea of local businesses sponsoring teams. I think it encourages community involvement, gets more people out to the game. I know it's more work because it means you're going to go out and find a sponsor for every team, which is a year-round project with all the leagues we have. But thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. So. Um we have been steadily increasing the amount of um, scholarship dollars that are collected um, for our rec leagues. Um, and we, if you looked in the fee schedule, we've even identified additional opportunities to 
um, have involvement from our community into help raising funds and raising awareness and create that sense of community. Um, so we are trying to be a little bit more holistic, not thinking on just a team sponsorship, but even to the extent of like field sponsorship, league sponsorships. Um, so a variety of different things. It is certainly something that we want to grow. Um, and as you stated, it does require time. And so that is going to be one of the caveats um, when you're talking about um, the, the struggles that Rec League already has. Um, and this isn't just in Zebulon, it's across the board. Um, a lot of effort is going into just trying to find coaches. Mm -hmm. And so that's something we are trying to evaluate how we can improve that. Um, and I think that it, it, it will all come. It's just a matter of having the time and prioritizing um, what would benefit our youth the most. Yeah, and I'm also thinking in terms of uniforms being sponsored by a business mm -hmm. and then having been a past coach in the youth league and not having any children, there is a big difference between a father coaching a team mm -hmm. and just another male figure. And I think sometimes when you approach a business and ask them to sponsor the team, you may be able to find an employee mm -hmm. who to help develop their management skills may actually want to coach, yeah. but they need to be invited because a lot of people don't know, it sounds strange, but they don't know how to get involved and how to be a coach. Absolutely. So I think there's a link there of not only getting the company to sponsor the jersey, but you may get a coach or two from that company. Absolutely, and that's definitely something we're, we're hoping to be able to push harder that sense of community and how to get involved and how to participate and what it means to participate, what the difference is that you're making in your community. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, if you can explain the, why we're not like um, the EBT matching, we kind of did away with that. Can you explain that for me, please? Yeah, so the EBT match program, we've not done away with that. We have a balance um, that rolls over. We have a sponsor that um, provides funding for that program on an annual basis. And so the town does not allocate funds specifically for that because we do have a sponsor that has provided funds for that in the past. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we just, when those funds are um, brought in, we come to the board for uh, acceptance and allocation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Also for me, I've been posed with a question with a line I with some, from some citizens saying why we don't sponsor football, why there's not a, like, out of all the sports that we sponsor, football is not sponsored by the town of Zebulon, but they wear the Zebulon title. Is there a reason for that? Oh, you mean uh, why, why the town? Mighty Mike, yeah, Mighty Mike Pee Wee football. They, they were representing the town of Zebulon, but they don't receive funding from Zebulon at all. So I've been posed with that question, is there a reason why there's not, we don't sponsor that? Um, so the, the town of Zebulon, it's, and, and I'm, I'm trying to track, is your question, why don't we offer, why aren't we the ones that offer, well, football, my, my, or my, why don't we okay. pay funding to support it? Correct. They, they don't receive funding from Zebulon at all, but they wear the town of Zebulon uniform. Mm -hmm. So I've been posed with a question by citizens. There's not a line item or anywhere in there that they receive any kind of funding from the town of Zebulon, but they represent Zebulon. I believe that that is something that would be a request to the board and that has been a part of like your strategic planning process in the past uh, or the, the nonprofit grants. And so my thoughts are that would have been the process that if they had applied, um, that would have been something that would have been considered. Um, if, they, if the board is looking to do something beyond that, then we would just need some direction from the board. Okay. Because they don't, we don't have that in our schedule as like something that kids can sign up for. We don't have a rec league for football that's, that's separate, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's important to know, like the town of Zebulon can't do it all. Um, we, it requires for us, for recreation to be successful in a community, um, you have to have other organizations that are willing to stand up and offer it as well. And so um, our role in that is to provide 
or, or to have the facilities that they can use, mm -hmm. which we do. So we have facilities, um, they're, we maintain them, we have the staff that maintains them. So these, that individual nonprofit doesn't have to have their own property that they've invested in and they have to maintain mm -hmm. to um, standards that can be played. Um, and so I, we do have it like a, a cost recovery policy that identifies if they are a 501c3, they are providing um, a recreation opportunity uh, that meets the needs of our citizens, that there is um, a, like a percent of a reduced rate that they're eligible for. Um, so that would, if, you're, if, if the board is seeking to do something beyond that, we just need the direction. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else on the recreation? One the maintenance part, how much of our work is contracted out for as financial wise to like uh, landscaping companies? Can you kind of give me an assessment on that, please? Um, yeah, so we the the current landscaping contracts were like a a mid term step to a long term plan to properly manage um, our our properties. Um, so we have, um, in order to properly manage with the growth that we were having, um, we contracted uh, landscaping uh, at Little River Park, part of Community Park, um, Gill Street Park, the cemeteries, uh, Whitley Park, um, I think I've named them all. And so as we are in a position to grow staffing wise, uh, we will begin to bring those back in house. Um, but we were not in a position, and I'll give the example, um, uh, Gill Street Park uh, was um, cut every 10 to 14 days uh, prior to going to a contract and so uh, we've been able to get that to every week. Um, so those are standards we would like to implement. Um, we didn't have maintenance standards necessarily. Um, so that, those are things that we've been in the process of developing and improving the quality. Um, and we're looking to bring that back in, in in the years to come. So the cemetery, is that contracted? or that, I see a line item for that. That's stuff that we do. That's contracted. That, that's out. contracted currently. Okay. And plus, when we're contracting, we're just paying the, the set fee. We're not paying any benefits. We're not paying. We're not paying work for workman's comp, right? They have to cover that themselves. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, you pay for it in the contract, right? It, Correct. But, but I mean, like, yeah. we're it's we're not shared paying. amongst other contracts yeah. that they have. Yeah. So eventually, it will weigh out. Like as we grow different pro additional, like as our greenway grows and as um, the property acreage for our parkland grows, that scale will balance out, will, will make more sense for some of those things to be held by staff. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Parks and Rec? Thank you. Thank you. Um, we need to take a 10 minute research recess.
Right, we're ready to convene. Stormwater engineer, is this going to be a full time permanent position or is this going to be something that once we get the stormwater infrastructure up to snuff, that this is going to be something that we can either take part time or that it's not going to explain? It's, it's, going, to be, it's going to be full time. Uh, we have a permit with the state of North Carolina that requires year round maintenance, public education, illicit discharge, a uh, whole list of programs that need to be done. And so as we've grown, we have just struggled to keep up with our uh, MS4 permit requirements, which is our stormwater permit throughout. So, yes, ma'am, we are looking to have this position on full time. And so that person's also going to do development review? Uh, that's something the manager and I are working out, but yes, that we envision them doing a, a piece of doing development review to assist myself. Okay. All right. So please correct me if, if, I'm, if I'm speaking incorrectly. We're good. We're, we are working through that process and what their roles will be right now. So that's a little bit reason I, I kind of gave way to Joe a little bit. So we're still working through that. Um, looking at how our water and sewer has increased from last year, why are why do we have the increase now that the pro is closed out? Which, which, uh, which location? Um, Any, the, are you just talking in general or just one specific location? Let's, I am talking pretty much in general. It okay. looks like there's been an increase in the, I mean, there was a decrease from the 2021 actual, but I'm assuming that was the water pro forma, but now it seems to yeah. be increasing. Quite yeah, quite what you're seeing is, is, is it, it, water usage is going to vary based on just like your house, just like irrigation. Irrigation is our biggest bottle, uh, not bottle, uh, it, goes by, by to, it goes up and down, bottle. Mm -hmm. I can't even say it right this night. But uh, it changes, like at the stadium, you know, where we have a really dry summer or something like that, they basically need to do more watering. So the stadium will go up when a really dry summer. Same way we're here on the lawn. As we do more events on the lawn and it's a dry summer, we increase our irrigation to, you know, combat the, um, the wear and tear on the, on the, the lawn. Okay, so that's not, that, that is not a number coming from the facilities, them, the facilities of the, the buildings themselves. That's mostly just watering. Yeah, that, that's where the, 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 you know, the volatility changes in that. Yes, our, our rates for our locations are fairly stable. We don't see very much uh, jump on them. From time to time, we have our own leaks, like anybody else does at home. Uh, this past year, we had one at Town Hall, and we had to dress, and we ran the bill up a little bit. So uh, from time to time, or you have a toilet. Uh, we have lots of toilets across the, the, the town, whether it's in our parks or whether it's in our buildings. That town occasionally will get hung up and run, and it could run a bill up, you know, maybe 20% a month. But generally, the facilities are fairly flat. Okay. Along that same line, is the reclaimed water we use to irrigate actually cheaper? Yes, sir. How much cheaper? Like 50% or 10%? Yes, yes. The rule of thumb is 50%. 50, yes, okay. Mm -hmm. And we use reclaimed water here at this site and at Five County Stadium. And that's to like spray the dirt? That's to spray the dirt, that's yeah. to spray the grass, it's the landscaping th throughout the stadium. It's the landscaping at this site. Does anyone have any more questions on this, on B-15? None. Okay. As far as B-16 for me, I see you have four vacant positions. Can you explain, I mean, kind of tell me how long those positions have been vacant? And what are we doing to fill them? And yes, sir. I'll give you an update on that. We have currently hired Mr. Jamie Baggett to be our crew leader. He started on June 1st. 
We also have an offer and acceptance out to Mr. Darren Lloyd, who will be starting June 20th. Uh, the uh, HR department and myself and my uh, senior construction inspector started interviews today for an equipment operator one. Um, and we are in the process of rewriting the job description for the operations manager. And once that's uh, been reviewed and approved, we will begin the hiring process for that. So that'll fill those four vacancies, correct? That is correct, sir. Thank you. One thing for me as well. Can you explain the street lights for me, like in the new communities? Is that funded by the town? Do we pay that or the HOAs or okay. who pay that? All right, good question. Uh, the development pays for the installation of the underground service and the light pole, okay? From that point, we take on the responsibility of that light, of those lights for the streets. It runs to roughly about $16.50 a month per pole. Now, if there's a um, area of light that's around in a common area, around a pool or something, that's taken care of by HOA. But anything that's along the roadway is the town of Zelvin's responsibility. And so approximately, you know, each year we're adding several thousand, you know, you know, several thousand dollars worth of new lights to our system because of our growth. So that is on the town. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's where, yeah, we've seen quite a bit of explosive growth with the development, yes, sir. Thank you. Just out of curiosity, are you aware of any technology where those lights are solar versus actually using uh, power from the power company? Duke Energy at this time has not shared anything that's uh, show, showing a solar power. We recently had went through and started all our lights now are LED. We did recently over the last two years convert from high pressure sodium. Uh, we paid an upfront cost for those change outs, but a payback within two years. And so all our lights now are LED. I know. With that said, is there some way we can, something, some tool we can utilize? Just curious where we can make the community pay for the HOAs pay for that lighting. Is there something like that we can look at in the future? We potentially should look to adopt a policy for that. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Howard, if you had them take over the lights, how would that affect? I mean, we, we do the roads. The roads are dedicated to us. Yeah. <clears throat> so to me, it would seem that we would be responsible for the lighting too. Yeah, I think we have a vested interest too because of security. Uh, we want to create a, a light level that's safe for pedestrians, safe for vehicle traffic, and also the lighting is also critical to our police department to see what's going on in neighborhoods. So, what would worry me about not saying we we couldn't is that an HOA would maybe want to put less lights because they don't want to write the, write the check at the end of the day, and, and maybe lower the standard. <clears throat> and would they be reported, broke, you know, if they're out, would HOAs report them as quickly as citizens in the town? Here? So we maintain them all the way around? We maintain around. them through Duke Energy. Uh, so they basically can call us in, uh, give us a poll number. We enter it into the Duke uh, online system, or they can enter it in, and Duke can come out there and make repairs. And when we say that's $16.50 a month, that includes the maintenance. Thank you. Yes, sir. And I can't remember, it, it might be in the, the CIP, mm -hmm. I think that actually it is, um, for the um, Twinkle Lights. That's in the CIP? Okay, all That's right, fine. cool. Then we don't have to talk mm -hmm. about that now. Any other questions? One last thing, Set aside to your... Um, the sidewalk and handicap maintenance, there's nothing needed on that? I see no funding on that? Uh, that is combined in contracted services. Okay. Any other questions? Next item. Thank you. Yes. Thanks. <clears throat> so, have you guys solved your fifty-eight thousand dollar question? 
I'll take that. First of all, let me uh, acknowledge uh, my appreciation for Commissioner Laux, who visited me this week to um, not only share what we're going to talk about here, but as well as um, the other questions that I was able to use that to prep staff. So really appreciate not being surprised and giving us the opportunity to look into it. So if you look at um, this sheet, is it uh, it's a B18? Um, we've got these spreadsheets all interconnected so that when you change something in one area, it shows up as a total elsewhere. And what we did more intentionally than we have in years past is the Community and Economic Development Department has been primarily a place where we put um, facade grants, streetscape grants. It's where we put in a contract, mat, uh, contract amount for our partnership with the Chamber of Commerce. And we're trying to set this up to be more of a standalone department in the future. And so this year, what, we did, what we've done is uh, the two staff positions, one is to turn the Main Street Program Coordinator into a full-time position, and the other is the creation of the um, Economic Development Specialist. Both of those were in the Planning Department. And while both of these positions will report to the Planning Director, we're setting the stage for this to be an independent department in the future. And so when we moved line items from the planning department, the cost associated with the economic development specialists did not transfer over. So the budget ordinance that you received does not have funding for economic development specialists in it. And so Bobby has created a new budget ordinance for you to consider that if you are interested in funding an economic development specialist, um, the ordinance that he's going to pass out to you includes the economic development specialist. The one that's before you right now just doesn't have the economic development specialist in there. So that's the, uh, that's the distinction um, that I wanted to talk about. Thank you. Would you pass it out, please? While he's doing that, speaking of that, for the economic development in the Main Street kind of position, is that some way kind of like they're overlapping, but that could be one position for as of right now where we're in our growth? Do you visualize that where it could be one, one position? Because it seems like they're going to be doing somewhat a similar job. To what There's going to be a little bit of overlap in terms of duties. However, the Main Street Program um, Coordinator, uh, that is a very dedicated based on geographic location that was already approved by the North Carolina Main Street Program. <laughs> Additionally, once we move into the full program, it requires a 40 hour week commitment for that independent part. This individual, um, right now we have a contract services, cannot go out to, to do stuff such as business recruitment into the industrial districts or anything like that, um, because that would be a violation of the North Carolina Main Street program. The uh, full-time Main Street, or the full-time economic development specialist will oversee um, the Main Street program, but also look at uh, developing um, an economic development strategy um, plan, as well as uh, business recruitment and expansion, um, bringing new industry here, as well as providing guidance to the board in terms of economic development policies, uh, rezoning for land that would be dedicated to attract new businesses, as well as recommendations um, potentially on infrastructure improvements. So this person will be housed in your section if they were to approve that program, maybe? For, for the time being, yes, but like Joe mentioned, eventually at some point in the future, this will roll into an, its own independent separate department. So the building upfit grant is now under special events. Is that correct? Downtown events is now moved to special events. Building upfit grant is moved to capital budget. Oh, okay. I didn't know that they were two separate ones. I'm curious to everybody's thoughts on like where we currently are now with our population. Are we ready for economic development personnel? Just kind of would love to know my fellow commissioners thoughts on it. Yes. I personally think we're overdue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. 
How about making the Main Street person full-time? Is that we there too as well? In order for them to keep up with what they're going to have to do. That is correct. The North Carolina Main Street program um, has uh, the prerequisite program for the downtown associate community. We've actually been able to go through that community quite uh, quickly. Um, and in accordance with the Main Street program policies, in order for us to move into the Main Street program, this having a full-time 40-hour a week position is a prerequisite. If this doesn't occur, we do not move into the North Carolina Main Street program. That said, we're also, we're, what, 18 months ahead of schedule? So we're, we're ahead of schedule for Correct. it. So do we, do we move into the full Main Street program now and fund that, and, and fund the full-time coordinator? Or do we stay just, I'm assuming it's just consider the downtown associate program at this point until maybe next fiscal year? that you know like that could also happen i'm assuming it could however there's a lot of resources that business owners have been asking about such as the uh, design incentives uh, where we work with um, nc state in terms of um, exterior building renovation design uh, there's other um, cross collaboration there's additional factors that are only eligible to full main street program uh, participants that we don't get to realize the whole purpose of the downtown uh, main or downtown associate community program um, is a precursor to make sure that we have a position or specifically a person in place that can walk us through and be able to allow for the program to be successful before the dac program was put into place they're finding that main street programs once communities were jumping into them initially they weren't able to be successful because they didn't have that foundation. North Carolina Main Street program has shown or has uh, indicated that we definitely have that foundation based on citizen involvement, um, as well as our downtown associate community coordinator has um, really exceeded the expectations of not only um, planning staff, but also North Carolina Main Street. The other component is we right now have a, a very a valuable opportunity to subcontract this position as opposed to hiring a position. Um, by contract a position, we don't pay for benefits, we don't pay for insurance or any of those items. Yet we have uh, probably, uh, well I'd say is expert level resources available to us. Um, we may not always have that opportunity. So right now the time is right to move into this program. So, uh, delaying it, we may lose opportunities like that in the future. Okay. Not being an expert on the Main Street program and regulations, et cetera, I'm assuming that any activity that goes on downtown that benefits, quote, the Main Street area, for example, tree lighting, St. Patty's Day party, rock block, et cetera, this Main Street person could serve or head up that committee as one of their job duties? They would definitely be an integral part of that committee, not necessarily heading them up. Um, with the North Carolina Main Street program, it is not to replace town-sponsored uh, town activities, but really empower the citizens, the business owners, the building owners in downtown to create personal investment. Um, it creates four different subcommittees within the organization, um, and those subcommittees really are empowered um, through the Main Street program to do things such as events and activities, promotions, and those type of elements. Those individuals will also be able to work collaboratively with our Parks and Recreation Department to make sure that this is in keeping with what the town sees as the future of downtown. Thanks, anytime we add a full-time position, whether we go part-time to full-time or create a full-time position, we wanna be assured there's 40 hours of work. There's way more than 40 hours of work for this position right now. Okay. And so can you just go tell me a little bit what the benefit is? I understand some of it, mm -hmm. but from going from the associate to the full downtown Main Street program, um, it sounds like we're getting some additional um, things from NC State, design aspects, but I've got to assume that there's more that, that we're able to tap into, right? That is correct. Um, there's additional resources. If we were, uh, for example, writing grants, the 
program itself doesn't provide funding, but it pro does provide direction um, towards obtaining grants for uh, everything from infrastructure improvements within the public right away to um, different event opportunities. Um, also, additional collaboration with other Main Street communities as well as the North Carolina Main Street organization of themselves. And, and what benefit does that give us? Uh, we learn the mistakes from other municipalities, so we're not destined to repeat them. And so this is going, I'm assuming then the full-time position is going to entail grant writing? That person's going to be responsible for doing grant writing then? If the opportunity allows it, yes. Well, I well, right now, there's, like I said, way more than 40 hours of work. So it would, we don't, we don't have that opportunity, at least for this next fiscal year. Um, but depending upon occupancy rates and other involvement from business owners and building owners in downtown with the program, that could potentially free up enough time for this person to explore grant opportunities as well. So maybe I'll miss some, can you give me an example of a day-to-day -day operation of that person, what they would be doing on a day-to-day -day basis? Just uh, they would be meeting with business owners. They would be coordinating with the chamber for uh, for ribbon cuttings. Um, they'd be coordinating with Parks and Recreation for different events. Um, eventually, the uh, the way it's structured in a lot of municipalities, uh, facade improvement grants and other uh, financial incentives are actually moved into the Main Street program. They'll be coordinating with the Main Street or the Zebulon Main Street Board, which will be created as a 501c3 um, to help guide them, provide instructions, as well as recruitment for these four subcategories. Um, they'll be working with our department uh, in situations uh, such as they have in Wilson, where code enforcement uh, fines have accrued to a certain point where the 501c3 could actually acquire dilapidated buildings, um, then find grants and resources to stabilize these buildings, and then potentially turn around and sell them to investors, um, which will then occupy them to make them a tax-producing economic hub into our downtown. I think currently for us, we don't have any old dilapidated buildings. That might work for Wilson, but we don't have any buildings. You now we're pretty much landlocked there, so I don't know anything that would fall in that category with we, that said. But. We actually have a building that the uh, code enforcement fines are accruing very fast right now. But we know the situation with that building. I mean, I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. it, it, was, it was old Zebulon. I understand what you're saying, but that building, I understand that concept. And it would also include like infrastructure where maybe some of the water pipes uh, and some of these old buildings that they have the, the, the pressure to maintain whatever they're going to move in into these buildings also. So, I, I didn't understand, I understand that. Statement. Yeah, like the old buildings we got downtown, is mm -hmm. we're adding capacity to these old buildings on, with an aging infrastructure, such as water pressure. Uh, so that person will cover that? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm, I'm saying those are some of the things that would have to be identified before, you know, uh, purchasing these buildings or, or, or having coordination with folks that want to purchase these buildings. And ultimately, this sure. item was an action item that was listed in your um, 2030 strategic plan in terms of an effort to revitalize downtown. Um, if you all want to change direction, you could uh, possibly revisit the 2030 strategic plan to remove revitalize downtown. I'm going to augment Mike's presentation because I've done quite a bit of research on this. Um, one of the things that hasn't been talked about about the value of the of a full-time position, uh, Mike has done a really good job about talking about the transactional benefits, but there's hidden benefits seen in sweat equity. Um, the big benefit of the Main Street program is in what it does to give the structure and the empowerment to the downtown business owners and property owners to work together as a cohesive whole. And studies show that a full-time Main Street uh, program director has the strongest correlation with those downtown businesses and property owners achieving that goal of acting in unison to put on events, um, act as an organizational structure, even doing improvements within, within their, the downtown areas and uh, to their buildings. So that's a, it's a hidden but valuable uh, addition seen through sweat equity. And to add to Joe's comments, um, that individual, they did a study 
um, that was in the Main Street annual report uh, two years ago that showed that municipalities that had an active Main Street program did substantially better during the 2008 recession compared to municipalities that did not. I apologize, I don't have those numbers memorized. Um, however, I can get you a copy of that report. With that said, there, there's business owners downtown Zebulon now that don't know our current person in place. So, I mean, I understand what you're saying. It's going to be more interaction with the business owners and building owners downtown Zebulon, but there are building owners that currently don't know the person that we have in place. And we're currently we're paying her thirty thousand, right at thirty thousand. So I mean, so just to let that be known, made known. That's all. And um, was this? Is there any type of salary study that was done, or is this consistent with what other downtown Main Street coordinators are getting paid? This is low. Mm -hmm. Most of them are full-time regular employees. We actually are able to realize savings by contracting this out. Okay, so, so yes. Yes. Okay. So I guess we're back to the economic development funding specialists. with the um, way to fund that? Uh, that's through, included through, in the, through this ordinance? That's included in the ordinance. Questions about that? Comments? Well, now that we've done the operating budgets, can we jump over to E1 and kind of go through the capital improvement budgets quickly? We've got a couple questions for the big spreadsheets. I do have a couple, I do have a few questions about the schedules. Can we do that first since yeah. it's just comes first? There's not many. What, what page are you on? I've got to, I've got to find which page. Um, on, on D6, can we please have the word uh, quarantined change to guaranteed under the exclusive use of the disc golf course that's spelled with a Q currently just so that it's consistent and spelled correctly and then there are um, let's see I think this is a question for Chris Ray on D10 for the air compressor. I know that most of the ones in yellow are ones that are that have a change to them, correct? Right. Yeah. Um, and there, there's not a change. It's $25 an hour, and the new rate is $25 an hour. Is that supposed to be a different rate, or? No, we, we have not replaced that asset. It's the original 1996 asset. Um, so we have not incurred any additional costs to purchase a new one. So the cost of set this is. OK. I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't supposed to be a different number since no, it was no. in yellow. This is this one of my assets I've bought in finance. So okay. it's been around a while. OK. Those were my big. Those are my two big questions in the in the uh, schedules. Unless anybody else had any. Oh, with the exception, did we talk about the PIO, the Public Information Officer? I can't remember where that is located. Was that under admin? It is. Yes, it is admin. I just want to make sure that 
that is something that we I, I'd like to have a little bit more understanding as to what the um, job description is and what they're going to be accomplishing fully because I didn't quite understand it when it was reviewed um, at, a, at the earlier budget session. Okay, so let me talk about it generally and then I'll provide the board with an option to consider. Um, generally, we are at a juncture where I think we have reached our capacity about putting out information by committee. Now, I don't want to suggest that if we get a public information officer that um, we will do away with departments putting out information. Departments will have to continue to do that. But the public inform information officer will be a, a way to ride herd over these individual efforts to make sure that they're consistent, but also to prod them to not miss opportunities uh, to get information out. So that's, that's one, one um, function. Second function is you all are in the middle of a branding process. You will adopt a, a brand uh, this year, and there's an opportunity for that brand to get misused, not only internally, but externally. Uh, externally, uh, op, uh, examples being a business wanting to co-opt your brand and use it for um, maybe uses that you don't necessarily think are consistent with uh, what your brand is. And so the public information officer is a way to be the sheriff, so to speak, on um, how that brand is used internally and externally. And the positive side on the external side is you can enter into arrangements with private businesses if they want to use your brand on a, uh, on a um, T-shirt, as a very specific example. It's a way that they are promoting your message. It's a way that they are uh, getting some um, revenue and, and doing well for their business, but they're not misusing your brand. So that's the, the second big general category is to kind of be in, internal and external sheriff regarding your, um, regarding your brand. And then the third big general area, as you all know and have, have heard directly, you're a quickly growing, diversifying town, and your new residents are, are struggling to get to find their place about what's going on in town and struggling to find out and discover each other. Um, and it has been brought up specifically about the creation of an app. Uh, when that was brought up, I went and visited the PIO at uh, Wake Forest, and in talking with him, uh, the app is just a tool that's part of a bigger strategy, and in talking with him, he, he relayed that he thinks that we're about the same place where Wake Forest was when they brought on a PIO. So those are the three uh, broad categories. The option that I'll put before the board, if, if you would like to see more, if you budget this funds, we won't go out and hire, we'll bring you back job descriptions just to make sure that this matches with what your intent is. And if you don't want to move forward with it, then we do a budget adjustment to take it out of the budget or we just don't spend the funds. So three general overviews and then an option for the board to consider. Well, I would certainly like to see the job descriptions. And with a PIO, is that going to kind of solve the issue that we've been kind of struggling with for the past couple of years, and that's getting a completed calendar of events um, and town information to the board prior to these events happening? Would that be something that the PIO would be in charge of gathering and disseminating that information? I certainly think that we could consider it. Um, I do know with the resources that we have, um, that's that's very tough. So adding resources, I think, only helps. But we can certainly add that to the job description as a consideration. I think that that would be a wonderful addition to the job description. Because as it stands, I feel like I know that Commissioner Miles and I have talked about several events that we would, and even Commissioner Laux and I would have loved to have been at or at least supported that we didn't even know about till after the fact. So if we can figure out a way to make it so that the board um, is given a calendar of events and information, um, that we should actively pursue doing that. Unless maybe you guys have other thoughts otherwise? No, I think we need to include it. 
in order to, you know, because we were having trouble with the communications with the community and everything. And being the second fastest growing town in North Carolina, <laughs> we probably need more than this position. I don't know if the PIO is basically a full-time position. I like the idea of either an assistant to the town manager or an assistant town manager because things are only going to speed up in this town. They're not going to slow down at all. So I'm, I'm wondering if this person or this position could maybe be half and half, combination so PIO plus an assistant. Um, you know, I having don't a town think it's manager. a bad idea. I like that idea of yeah. personal assistant town manager slash that PO. I do like that a lot. I mean, I like we're moving branding along because I think we're way behind, but the town manager should not be heading up the branding. Right. He has far more important things to do. So we do need, he needs some assistance. Right. So maybe this position could be half and half and maybe you could draft the job description as such with your input. I agree with that. I agree with that. So we've got. What do you guys think, Commissioner Harris? What are you thinking? No, I'm. I'm sorry. You just have to find more money. You'd have to, you know, the salary would have. Well, to the salary would be the same, pretty much, though, correct? I mean, we just well, we can always make an adjustment. Adjustment, of course, to need to happen be. down the road. Okay. Yeah, because depending upon what he puts in that job description, it could go up, could go down, but oh, it's probably yeah. going to change. So his job title will be assistant town manager, correct? Or slash, PIO. slash PIO. Let's see what the job design. description says. Okay. Okay. Thanks for going back and revisiting that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had just thought about it as we were skimming over to the capital. If I can start off things, I'm on sheet E5, equipment and IT fund. I'm sorry, what was the page? Page is E5. Number one, what is the 800 megahertz radios for and who would use those? So what you see in the um, in the CIP is actually an upgrade to our existing radios. Um, the technology has changed, and we need to upgrade our current radios to remain able to talk with our neighbors in Johnston County. So that that ten thousand dollars is the upgrade. About. It's an upgrade to current radios. That's correct, and that is a cost share program with the county. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. While you're up here, sure. I, I think we talked a little bit about this. Um, when you Gina, I'm sorry, board. I can't hear you. Boy, that never happens. <laughs> <laughs> when you were talking to Chris. <laughs> oh. You talked about this a little bit when you were presenting um, your budget, and I just wanted to circle back so that I had an understanding, because um, we talked about where the safety house would be would be stored. And I'd like to get a better understanding of how many times of a year are we going to be pulling this thing out? And would it be more cost effective for us to rent something like this so that we don't have to incur like devaluation and, you know, degradation of the unit over time? Yeah, so we would we would store the within one of our either we, there's a storage building we have down at um, down at the yard waste center potentially there potentially in the um, EMS building while we're while we're using that for some storage somewhere dry that's the short version because it's we're very much an inflatable um, we would use it I would guess probably um, six to eight times a year um, typically fire prevention week typically some um, daycare events, that kind of thing. Um, I'm not aware of anywhere we could rent one from. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, the the, pro, the way we used to, if, if I made reference last time, we used to use the trailer. Right. The trailer worked well from a, a, worked well from a perspective of us being able to share a resource. It just became very, very costly 
mm -hmm. um, for everybody to use it. Um, that's why we tried decided maybe the move to an inflatable version. Um, it's a, a fraction of the cost, um, literally no maintenance other than just keeping it dry and keeping it, you know, if, if it becomes damaged. So, um, you know, potentially with that said, what there may could be, uh, we would have to look at it, but it could be that we um, purchased something in conjunction with someone else where we shared it. Um, that would get it more use for our, for our money, so to speak, um, potentially more maintenance as well. But that may be an option. We, we do share some resources with some of our neighbors, for example, Wendell or Nightdale <coughs> or Hopkins or something like that. And do you, ha and I think I even asked this last time, um, what the typical lifespan of something like this is going to be? Because I realize that you can only patch these things X number of times. So the, uh, yes, so I think uh, either you or the mayor one, asked, someone asked that question before. I reached out to the uh, manufacturer and they said typically eight to 10 years okay. of expected life, you know, treat it, treat it well and take care of it to last longer, but average life is about eight to 10 years. Okay, thank you so much. While we have, while, I'm sorry. sorry. No, while we have you up here, Chris, kind of, I want to open up a discussion with my fellow commissioners here about the sleeping quarters. What do you guys thought, being that we're about to build a new facility, Built, spending the 221000 currently now for something within the very near future, we're going to build something bigger, bigger and grand. What are you guys thinking? You, you're going out three or four years before anything's here, though, and our, our men are crammed in there. So I, I think it's something we're going to have to invest in for the safety, too, of our, our employees. This is what I think about, and it's tricky to even talk about because I, I want everyone to be as safe as possible, but they don't often wear their masks inside the building. And from my understanding is one of the big reasons that we want so many of these separated quarters would be to cut down on the exposure of, you know, maybe any airborne, you know, contagions, but I don't know that there's a whole lot of like proactive self-policing at this time. And I think that we really have to, you know, I'm not opposed to moving forward with them, um, especially since I know that we can potentially reuse some of these components in the future for other projects or, or needs. But I would urge you to develop some kind of policy that really is going to work in meaningful ways to cut down on exposures while your team is, is hanging out in shared spaces. Sure. Yeah, can I go back to page E5? One other item I'd like to bring up is we have in the projected 2024 budget $12,000 budgeted for a town hall weather camera. I'm sorry, uh, you're on E5? I'm on E5. Right smack dab oh, in yes, the middle yes, of the yes. page. I'm so sorry, I, I got it now. Yeah, I would propose to help our growing town that we actually move that weather camera over to 2023. And we have uh, a savings of $10,333 from the safety committee that could be used to offset the price of that camera. Agreed. Okay. Other comments? I agree. That way we move it up actually a year. I like it. Hang on a second. If I, I, I want to make, make a note about that real quick. Just okay. hang on. Just give me one moment. So. And for the sake of a motion, we would just take the money from general funds. Move it up. That's okay. an easy way to mo make a motion. All right. Um, just for the checks and balances portion of it, Larry, put everything everything that we're taking out back into general fund and then take right. it, put it in general fund and then take right. it back out. That's yeah, yeah, easy yeah, way yeah, to yeah, do yeah. this. Now, now we have that. I'd like to take a look at E8, <clears throat> Economic Development Strategic Plan.
Just get a little understanding. If we're about to hire a person, potentially for the position, would that fifty thousand dollars be kind of still necessary? Is that something? If you could explain that for me. Yeah, that'd be essentially the guidebook. That would be um, this individual will work with your uh, with you, as well as uh, City of Raleigh in terms of the utility services to determine which <laughs> arena of economic development do we want to play in. Do we want to be competitive with Holly Springs and try to attract a BioLife Sciences company, uh, making sure that we have a full understanding of, okay, what type of investment is going to be necessary to accommodate that? Are we going to be uh, going after smaller tech flex uh, type businesses? Are we going to be continuing to uh, work to um, work collaboratively with NC State uh, to incubate new businesses such as Tethys and Next Century Spirits. Um, realistically, this is going to provide the playbook that that economic development specialist will then um, execute um, based on your direction as well as real world market conditions and utility availability. But if we're hiring a guy and paying him over 80000 a year, couldn't he help us develop that playbook? Because we have some smart people right here too, yeah. rather than bringing in another consultant at fifty grand. This person would be integral into that dis uh, that discussion. However, um, having that outside resources will help to frame it. It's similar to how we hired an outside consultant to do a land use plan, a transportation impact plan, a parks and recreation plan. Um, that outside perspective also frees up the time for this position or for the economic development specialist to get the foundation of um, meeting the existing business owners, building those relationships, understanding the dynamics uh, that are in play here in Zebra. And then we have the same issue with the emergency operations plan for $10,000, where it looks like we're hiring another consultant to help write that when I think we can do that internally. So why you see the, the lesser amount for the, the emergency operations plan, we've done about 80% of the legwork um, in-house, like you referred to. We've got about 20%, I would say, left to go. We've about maxed out our internal capability. We need someone to come in and finish this thing off. Um, and one key part of that is um, having a good emergency operations plan is key to federal reimbursements when emergencies happen. We want to make sure we've dotted all the I's and crossed the, the T's when it comes to our EOP, and that's something that's outside of any of our, uh, our staff's um, knowledge base. So the, the, what you see here is just representative of getting someone to help us finish that up and, and get it taken care of as compared to writing a whole plan. If right, you and you think that would be done by the end of the, by December? I would hope so. Um, I would like to see on E8, thank you, um, the actual <coughs> congressional earmark for the $700,000 um, to actually see the grant and then the appropriations request. I'd like to see that document. I'm sorry, I didn't follow. Could you repeat that? The $700,000 that we were... Uh, given access to through David Price's efforts. Um, I'd like, to, there was a request that was written for that money, and I'd just like to see it. Oh, you'd like to see the application. I'm so sorry? You'd like to see the application? Yes, please. Got it. Um, and I know that we're kind of, we're at the end, mm -hmm. um, but I would like to actually jump to E1. We've got, we've got the Judd and North Arundel fire signal, and I just don't know if that can't be an FY24 expenditure instead of for this year, since we are in the very early stages. And from what I understand, we're still a couple years out from, you know, getting this thing really truly rocking and rolling. And I don't I don't think it's a bad idea to have it in place just for the public to become a, accustomed to prior to it actually coming online. 
but I think that we could actually roll that into FY24 thoughts. I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. I agree with that. There's right. no way, no way that's going to happen this year. Yeah, and I would bet you say about three years, what, about three years out, Commissioner Clark? From me, I'm going to go back, if I could go back to E6. I just want a little bit of clarification on E6, a few things on E6. This will be for Chief Walker. E6. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I know what you're going to ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go, go ahead. No, just to just kind of get a, uh, information on the, I think a while back you talked about the key card access. You guys had something implemented earlier. I just want to get a little bit of understanding on that. And then the second question would be explain your additional parking, if you would, please. So <clears throat> right now we're operating on hard keys. And um, it's not ideal when you're uh, looking at managing that inventory when people come and go. We'd like to get on board with how the town is um, providing security measures for this building with the key card access that you can cut on and cut off. Um, it also allows us to designate access to spaces easier. So we have to have I think it's seven or eight different key systems over there um, because only certain people can get into the evidence room and only certain people can get into the administration rooms. Um, so it will allow us to assign those accesses individually instead of by the key. And it, honestly, I already thought that you guys had your key card access and I just found out two weekends ago that you didn't, and I was surprised. Um, but when it comes to <coughs> places like the evidence room and such, um, I'm assuming that that would be solely key card and not any other push button that could be used. Because if someone knew someone's, you know, code, yeah. for some reason, then they could potentially access the evidence room and it would show up as someone else accessing on their behalf, but if they have to actually have the physical key card. Correct. So would that be a component that you'd be considering? Absolutely. Okay. And then the um, additional parking, we have two parking spaces out front and um, one, one is handicapped and one individual. Oh, out front. Um, we have quite a few visitors to the station every day and um, it, it's a long haul for some people to make the walk from the back of town hall up front. So we would just like to add some additional spaces out front. Okay. How much, how many spaces would that give you? Four? Four. Four. So $8,000 a space. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we've already got bids for that. I mean, kind of like you're saying, you just kind of a guesstimation type thing. All right. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, sorry. Yeah, also, also on uh, page E6, we have a $42,000 expense for a driving apron and entrance gate for Five County Stadium. And in that we're in lease uh, negotiations now, unless that's an emergency, I wonder why we're spending the money not yeah. knowing long term what our plans are. That that's ex that's such a yeah. good point because if this is not something that's going to continue down the road, is it something that we absolutely need? Okay. 264 parking lot, the lower level down at the pond. We have a driveway entrance there. Uh, basically, it is um, constant maintenance related. Uh, some of the large trucks that come out of there, where the existing apron is just too short, and those trucks will sit back. They basically, when they go to pull out, they're rutting up that uh, driveway there. We've actually had one accident there with a car because we, we didn't get there in time to keep it maintained. Uh, we've also had the gate damaged uh, multiple times. I think we have repaired it for the last time 
So we're looking to put a more heavy duty gate in there. It will be an improvement that will stay with the facility um, and keep our maintenance down and also hopefully make it safer for our patrons leaving the stadium to get out. Is this something, um, because I do appreciate that from time to time the big rigs want to come in and, and pull there for whatever reason, mm -hmm. they're taking a nap or they're getting ready to unload or whatever. I think that it's fabulous that they have that capability, but would it make more sense to have them only allowed to pull off and park in certain designated areas that are less prone to being torn to pieces? This is the, the other location on the other side of 39 lot that's not suitable for them and for their access because the landscaping and also the gate features that are there. So this is the best place for them at this time. Okay. On the 260, uh, 264 lot. So okay. Okay. It is an item to basically try to reduce maintenance, try to reduce liability, and it's an improvement that should be there for the next 20 years. Okay. If, if it's a safety type issue and it's going to save us money in the long run, probably money well spent. Mm -hmm. Along those same lines, I did see in the budget spreadsheets our $4,400 lease payment we get every year. Is there some way I could ask our direct staff to? compile for us kind of a profit and loss of five county stadium our actual expenses each year versus our revenue you can I, actually I, probably do that yourself if you take that forty five hundred dollars in revenue and look in 520 there's two line items uh, one for maintenance and one for water and sewer and one for materials and supplies so those if we can do that because I know we in, in 520 operating budget for 520 that we recently discussed. Okay. There's a line item for water and sewer. There's a line item for maintenance, and there's a line item for materials and supplies. Those are only our three expenses. And then we get 4,400 dollars. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So we, we really need to start generating some revenue. <laughs> that maintenance maintenance uh, expense in there includes things like the check valve we had to replace recently. Yeah, that was that was a cap, that was a capital expenditure there. Uh, typically, the maintenance covers the parking lot lights. We have 82 fixtures down there that we maintain, uh, <coughs> which for proposal. Then we have you know the light poles itself that occasionally get da damaged. Uh, we have electrical switch gear down there, panels. We also maintain the parking lot stone. Uh, we also maintain the water and sewer, and we also maintain storm drainage down there. So uh, we got some things outside the facility that we take care of with those few dollars. If you would put that together for us, because I think we need to start looking at that as we look at the lease negotiations that will be starting shortly. So let me interject. Um, we are going to be in a position where we can start sharing information with you all at your July monthly meetings. Uh, those are the one-on-one on one or one or two meetings. Uh, there won't be a June meeting. If you all want to meet, that's fine, but you won't have a scheduled uh, monthly meeting in June. But in July, we'll have information where we can start to share with you about the costs associated with upgrading that stadium to meet the player development license as well as any augmentations to that stadium to make it more of a fan experience or to um, open it up for more off-day and off-season use. So we'll start to get you that information at the July monthly meeting. You'll have a work session for it. Uh, that's going to be one of your topics for your August work session. That is naturally going to generate uh, do we need to revisit the lease? Who are our partners? How much do they contribute? So if, if it's okay, if you can hold off until that, you're going to get that information that you're requesting at that time. That'll be fine. Thank you. Is that information going to include um, any thoughts that have come from the Wake County Commissioners thus far? No. Um, I will. The, the, the plan right now is that... I think I've, I'm remembering their schedule right. I think they have a work session August 8th. 6th. 6th? Yeah. Okay. So you will see the results of their work session. That will give you an indication of where they are on, on this issue. And much like, uh, much like what happened last time with the last work session where it was an amendment made to the lease, um, you all can attend. Just we're going to have to make... We're going to have to make really sure we get the numbers right um, so you don't violate open meetings law. But you'll have a chance to see them possibly uh, directly deliberate, but you'll definitely get to hear a summary of, of what they talked about on their deliberations at that 
August 6 work session. work session. And so you're saying there's a possibility for some of us to attend that work session, or are you saying? Yes, there is a possibility, okay. but we gotta be very careful on the, on the numbers, and the clerk can help you out on that. Is there a chance that will be televised? I think, I, I think they tell it. I don't know. I don't know if they televise their meetings or not. Okay, so is that way we could attend without breaking the uh, meeting oh, open yeah. meeting law? We, uh, we'll we'll get you that information in advance of the meeting, so we you know um, what your viewing options are, either in person or um, online. Why are, you, why are you there, Chris? I have a, on E6 as well. The public works, um, I would like to open a discussion up with my fellow commissioners about um, the public works shed. You guys thought some 533000 for the shed. And if you can kind of, I guess you would give us a little brief on it and then we can yes, discuss it. Yes, sir, it. I can give you an update. Uh, as uh, you do recall, in this year's budget, there is, uh, was $350,000 to begin that process and build that shed that was froze. We have not taken any action on that. And since the two years which we have made that uh, estimate for you, uh, still has risen over 20%. Copper has risen probably over 30 to 40%. So we've came back and, and asked for an increase in that to, be, to build that same facility. In addition, we've came back and added in uh, security cameras, something we picked up from our, our recent visit with several commissioners that we needed additional cameras. We've also added a one stall unisex restroom, an eye wash station, and a, um, a hand sink there to that project scope. And then, of course, added our contingencies on top of that. So the new projected cost to complete that state facility is $533,000, <coughs> 350 of which is already budgeted. So that's an additional request for 183. And is the fuel, what's the fueling station Thanks. upgrade? Fueling station upgrade? There's uh, multi-parts and multi-pieces of that fueling station. Uh, the software and pedestal that we are currently using is from 2004. We are struggling to keep the maintenance up on that and having someone that's just not compatible anymore. So we want to upgrade the pedestal, which means the, we'll be getting new. We currently use what's called a, a little pioki to identify each car as they come in. It tracks the mileage, the date, the time, who the person was, all that. So we'll be updating that to the new uh, system. We are also hoping to get new software enhancements to allow for vehicle, better vehicle tracking. So for example, if police chief's uh, car comes in and uh, we know there's been 3,000 miles since her last oil change, we can have that data and we can send her an alert or a text to say, hey, to remind you about time to get your vehicle uh, serviced or get it inspected. We're also asking for um, some additional leak detection equipment. We're also asking for some additional tank monitoring and we're also asking for a replacement of one fuel pedestal. Uh, there was one that has not been replaced in its original, and it's seen better days. And so um, we'll be upgrading that, that so we can continue to provide services to our fellow departments. That work? Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you. Actually, I have one more question from E6, but I'm going to be asking Chief Perry to come up one more time. I'll be glad to turn the table. Yes, ma'am. All right, so the 221 for the sleeping quarters, um, and then could I understand down under the projected 24 through 29, there are additional sleeping quarter that are that you're going to be asking to be funded the um, referring to the 750 in the, uh, the um, that, that down at the bottom of e6 over to in that under the fy 23 notes there's a at the very bottom it says projected fy 24 I'll, to 29 expenditures I'll address that so on the bottom where, where I'm showing the revenue, I was just trying to show that in FY23, that money is going to the sleeping quarters, but that wasn't 
to indicate that we're going to be spending 50000 for each subsequent year on sleeping quarters. I was just trying to identify that for the FY23 notes, that amount of money is going to the sleeping quarters for the FY23 budget. So it's not going to be, you're not going to be spending the additional money in out years for the sleeping quarters. That note was just for FY23. E even though it's under the FY24 section? E yeah, the, the, the note that says sleeping quarters, yes. that's just to identify where those funds are going in this fiscal year. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't relate to the FY, what's the money under FY24? Four is not related to the sleeping quarters. That's just the expected revenue that we're going to be uh, receiving from the property tax dedicated to capital. But that's not two sleeping quarters. The sleeping quarters is just for this coming fiscal year. So, so does that mean the three six the, the three sixteen that's from capital part, the two twenty one is going to the sleeping quarters? I'm sorry, I, this is just a little bit confusing. Should I ignore the fact that it says projected FY24 to 29 expenditures? Um, ig ignore it if, if you're associating it with sleeping quarters. All I'm trying to do is to know, I'm trying to alert the board that we'll have dedicated revenue coming in in future years. And I'm just trying to show the balance of uh, expenditures and revenues, but I'm not, indicating where those funds are going. I'm just trying to, in general, keep the revenues and expenditures balanced for years 24 through 29, but I'm not trying to suggest that those funds are going to the sleeping quarters. Oh, okay. If we could take a look, um, darn it, Chris, I'm sorry. Not, <laughs> wrong, Chris. I mean, Not that he's right and you're wrong, but I was talking about Chris Ray. Um, on E2, under the walk Zebulon, there's the West Sycamore Arundel to Church um, sidewalk project for $315,000, and that is something that we had put on hold, I believe, from last year. Yes, ma'am, that's correct. And um, in the, the time that has elapsed since then, you and I have talked about the sidewalk that is actually on Gannon um, mm -hmm. that is in terrible need of repairs, like sections of it are missing and there are holes. And you had mentioned something about needing to um, allocate some of that 315,000 to be able to do or, that repair. Th that's an option. You could take it from there. You could take it from general fund. It's, it's about prioritization or, or what you think is most important. So whatever the board wants to do is their option, but I would concur with you that that section of sidewalk in front of the, the Methodist church needs to be replaced. Okay. And then is that without having to do any land acquisition, um, is the scope of the project to create that sidewalk from West Sycamore from Arundel to church, is that still a $315,000 project if there is no land acquisition that has to happen? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So what would the what would the scope be <coughs> with land acquisition? We feel like on the West Sycamore project, based on my review, uh, that we do not need land acquisition. And that's going to be just on the northbound side of the street? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You know, I mean, that's where we're proposing it at this time, and that's what the estimates are built off of. Once we uh, get out there and do surveying and work with our design team, we may change that location to the south side, but based on my review and the, the existing trees and existing infrastructure, we feel like the north side is the best location to put it. Okay. And then you had indicated when you and I spoke, you know, that the repair to um, the Gannon side 
would be about a seventy thousand dollar project with seventy eighty thousand dollars with design yes ma'am and okay. contingency okay because it can't just be repaired it's going to have to be a complete tear out and it's going to be a complete tear out and anytime you work on the ncdot right away we've got to involve an engineer and have the plans get for an encroachment agreement i cannot get an encroachment agreement without a sealed set of plans even on something as simple as repair okay um guys i don't know if you've seen that section it's awful it's and it really needs to be repaired and i think that if we're going to move forward with the sidewalk for a rental to church and it's going to cost 315 mm -hmm. that we need to find that we need to allocate the 70 grand to get that other piece that that, that portion of that sidewalk done it is extremely dangerous and to the point where like a little child's foot could fall in there and they could break their leg type big holes so um there's some, we... there, there's some benefits to doing them together some economies of scale hopefully the more you do the cheaper the unit cost is same way with the design, design consultant if you decide to do that uh so um there is benefits to doing them together okay so how would we... If the board agrees, how would we need to put this into just add it to the capital to your capital improvement budget and have that designated as that repair to be to to coincide with the Sycamore Street sidewalk build? You concur, Mr. Manager? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, is there a consensus I'm, I'm that we I'm should good. get that addressed? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so I'm going to make it. Is a it note. necessary to do it? I mean, yes, it's necessary. It's needed. But do you have to change your budget right now in order to pull that in? Well, we're going to be making other little okay. other little tweaks, so we might as well just do this now so that we can have it so that the economy and of scale can be. And we can try to fix be, them together so it can Yes, save so that we can save with, what do you say, the design aspect? Yeah, this economy since going general, the larger the project, typically you get uh, better unit cost. The more you do, the cheaper it is. It's kind of like buying laundry detergent. The more laundry detergent you buy, the cheaper it is by the pound. So Con concrete the same way. If we put 70. I really like to see 80. <laughs> go high. <laughs> you don't know what's going on. Of course, because go big or go home. That's what it is. That's right. You have to. Chris, I, you asked. Like, Chris, you asked. <laughs> like, this is what we call Chris in your project, right? Man, that's what I think it's going to take to do the job. Yeah. All right, so 80000 Hold on, I want to defend him a little bit. <laughs> um, Thank you, sir. That memory says that sidewalk is too narrow, so we'd have to widen it as well. It's, it's going from four foot to five foot to meet our standard. Okay, and now let me talk to Mr. Clark. Do we, do we have um, requirements in our transportation plan or our land use plan that it needs to be wider than five foot. Not unless it's dedicated as a greenway connection, but our standard is five feet. And I would say 80 would be a better estimate. Okay, so add 80 to your CIP. Yes, ma'am. And, and you'll make, we'll make a note for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So add it into the walkability project. We have two into projects. the walkability project. Yeah. Okay. The project, yes, ma'am. And under that, we'll just have two projects, West Sycamore and what we'll call West uh, Gannon Sidewalk Improvements. Okay. West Gannon Sidewalk Improvements. 200 block or something like that. Okay. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's between 100 and 200, so would it be the 100 block? Yes, 100, okay. yeah. Okay. West Gannon. Yes, ma'am. Okay. If we're good on that, I'd like to open up discussion on uh, D21, my fellow commissioners as well. You guys have turned to D21.
I would just like to open up the floor kind of for the discussion. You guys thoughts on the pay for our commissioners wise. We all know this job is, as the community is growing, it's changing, becoming more demanding. It's pretty much, all, we all can agree a full-time job if you're gonna do it the right way as we're going now. So I would like to have the thoughts on the pay chart now for commissioners. Well, I think that we've seen that the Wake County has done a reevaluation for their commissioner pay. Clearly, we are not the scale that Wake County is, and so I don't think that we need, you know, the significant increase that Wake County um, adopted. But um, as our town's growing, I mean, I know that I spent a significant amount of time out in the trenches, if you will, you know, just talking to customers, customers, well, yeah, they kind of are, talking to citizens and, um, you know, being out there doing meaningful engagement. So I don't think that a nominal increase is a bad idea. I think that it would allow us to actually, for me, this, this job costs me money every year you know, like the salary that I get, the, the compensation that I get does not cover the money that I put out just in what I do in the community. So I would like to at least see it reflect, you know, some of the increasing ex expenses that we incur just, you know, by all of the additional, you know, outreach that, that we perform. And I agree. I think that with the level of support that this particular board provides to the community, um, to see some type of increase would be good. Commissioner Louts, your thoughts? No, for the sake of the um, people watching this online, um, we basically get a stipend of $5,533 a year, plus you have the option of opting in for the health insurance, which is approximately 6000 So you're talking around $11,000, under $1,000 a month uh, to do this job. And we do put in significant more time, and the town is growing and things are moving faster, so I think a pay increase probably is warranted. The biggie is how much. Okay. Any thoughts from anyone? I've been doing it for 20 years. So I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, um, if you do, I think you need to look at comparable towns. I mean, at the, and well, I don't think it needs to go up that much. We had a chart from the. And town. remember, yes, I remember that. Yes, ma'am. And. Um, you know, this too, you need to remember, is a service. And when you ran for election, you knew that there were going to be things that we had to do. And yes, it has become much more, but, you know, just remember that you're serving your, your citizens. Yeah, the ironic part is, I think when most of us ran, we had no idea what the pay was. <laughs> that, I never, that wasn't I didn't even know an you issue. I going to get anything. Yeah. So, when I ran. So, but uh, yeah. when you started first, I mean, Okay, now where we're at, like I said, I know, like I said, oh, I, I know, but I mean, it's, it's, you know, everybody does things differently. Yes, ma'am. I mean, you, you are, you know, are out all the time. I mean, you know, it's your choice too. So, yeah, maybe we need more compensation, but remember, it is, it is a sacrifice and a good one. With that said, we're back at square one. What do you guys think of a company like a pay? Why? I mean, a price. Does anybody have a copy of that comp sheet with them? Because I did not bring mine. I didn't bring mine either. I'm not sure if I brought I can go get it if you would like me to. Good night. I'll tap it. Go ahead, go ahead. What are some comparable towns and some pay? So according to our city of Oxford, 
they have 8,800 8, or 87, according to this sheet. And their board member annual compensation is 6479. Um, they're the closest ones to us. Wendell's population is 119, and their board members make 8913. And that those are the two. Um, town of Roseville population is 10,047. Their board members are at 8232. That that was Roseville. Yes, Roseville. Now, do those include the um, insurance compensation? So Oxford does not pay health insurance. Does not provide a cell phone stipend. So no, um, they give some travel allowance. Roseville does not pay health insurance. They do have uh, town issue computers, iPad. Wendell does not pay insurance. For this position, I didn't think he got anything. <laughs> I didn't ask for any money. So um, I, I realize it is. Uh, now, I mean, the, that's you know, the thing about it. We, we, we're compensating everything else for fuel and everything else. It's taking us money and time to drive to these places that we go. And I know that every grand opening that I've been to, or say, or a meeting in, in Nightdale or whatever, maybe we're all there. So it's it's it's, it's still costing hundred to be about thirty percent. And I just threw that out there because. Um, have a calculator and that's a round number. This question is for the town manager. Is there a formula somewhere we can find that, that anything that exists that you know of as far as calculating that? Because they seem a little bit hesitant to find out what we want to, that number to be. Is there something that municipalities use to compensate, kind of figure out the calculations for compensation for commissioners? Is there a formula anywhere? Not that I'm aware of. Doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. I'll add some additional commentary because I was going to make this as a recommendation for you to consider, not a recommendation. Someone would have come up with a compensation formula that changes. Okay. We're just not aware of one. Right. Okay, so do we want to table, table this it. discussion we'll for table right it. now and know that we can revisit it later and if it's something that we need to pull out of what general fund it would come? We would come back with options on how to fund it. Okay. We, we would let you know that. All right. Are we take them to a certain date or just time frame or just take them? What we would do is we would just add this to your, well. August? Yeah, we, we would need that in your motion. It could be a separate motion from adopting the budget, but just to add that as an agenda item for the August work session. That way we're real clear of what we're talking about and when we're talking about it. So would you like that to happen now? You can do that now okay. if you'd like. Then I'd like to make a motion to table further discussion on the elected officials stipends until the August work session. Second. All in favor. Approved. Okay. Um, if it's okay to, to move on, okay. Um, on E3, we are talking about the how we're going to spend our ARPA funds. And currently we have the lion's share, and by the lion's share I actually mean all of the ARPA funds going towards our stormwater infrastructure. Something that absolutely needs to be addressed, but I know that some of the commissioners I have talked to have had concerns about spending all of those ARPA funds in that one project to Zoom Height. Um, and so I wanted to just kind of test the waters and, and find out what the temperature is with everyone else as far as do we want to spend it all there or do we want to put part of that as a, because even if we spend every single dollar, we still are going to be millions of dollars that we need to spend to get it all up to where it needs to be. So do we want to take some of those ARPA funds 
and maybe put them towards um, doing a more proactive activation of our Little River Park initiative and get that rocking and rolling on a more meaningful level or something else. That's just the first thing that I'm throwing out um, so that people can see uh, like a tangible project that's coming out of those funds because people don't normally think of stormwater, but if we put it in a bond referendum, which I think that we're gonna have to do no matter what just to get it all fixed, when we, when we, I think that we can sell it through a bond referendum when we explain how important it is to have the stormwater needs addressed. And at first, when we first started discussing this, I personally thought, yeah, let's just go and do the whole thing. Let's just put it all towards stormwater. Let's just do that. But then the rules kind of changed a little bit. And now we have a lot more latitude and, and I think that it might be significant to actually do something meaningful for the people in this town. And what are we looking for, you know, especially this time of year, are recreation activities. And Little River Park has so much going for it and so much possibility, especially when you consider that we can be um, utilizing collaborations with Wake County at the same time. So I'm just putting it out there for for discussion. So this one thousand, this one million eight hundred eighty-five thousand. That's where that comes. That's yes, the, that's yes. That's the that's the funding that we got from the ARPA from ARPA, ARPA. and that would just mean that like you know that's all currently going towards West Horton mm -hmm. Street rerouting. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely agree that we find some way to where the cities can see these funds in use. This is a one-time. Kind of not, I wouldn't use the word gimme, but opportunity for where we can actually impact the citizens directly with these funds. And going to um, Wilmington, we had so many great opportunities where they would directly help from their citizens. I think this is a great opportunity. There's great opportunity for grants and things that nature for stormwater, which we've already addressed and we talked about, discussed amongst ourselves. So this is an opportunity, as you just stated, we can pull some of those funds out and where the citizens can see the di that direct impact of those funds. I like that. I, I agree as well. Um, while I do totally believe that stormwater is important, especially a few weeks ago when we had the huge storm and um, looking at some of the roads, I think that we do need to make some investments in stormwater. However, I think that utilizing the ARPA funds to to help citizens or to show some support in different areas would be more beneficial and more meaningful. Um, whereas, you know, the stormwater, maybe we can find funds in different places well, for that. And, and we, we're, we're going to be talking about bond, bond, right? bond, um, refer bond yes, referendum in the not too distant future. And so what do you guys think? Oh, yeah, about? I concur with your thought and direction, yes. but we have $285,000 budgeted next year for the plan design and drawing of Little River to move this along. But that's then, not implementation though. Right, and then we do have a healthy general fund balance, plus we need to be thinking about a bond referendum, exactly what what is our priorities. I mean, I've started a list over and over again and it changes every time I write it up. So maybe we just start working on that list of what we could do, because we do have gen healthy general funds. So can we put those funds kind of like on hold until kind of still approve the agenda and kind of put I those funds? I wouldn't want to put them not all on hold, but I would say we should decide on a number to maybe say we're going to think about it and those particular, whatever that number is of ARPA funds, we'll talk about, because we can do that. So, yeah, so we can we you know, like make the motion to, like if the ordinance goes through to, with the exception of holding these funds until we have further discussion on that, how they were used. That's exactly the a way to do it, is when you make a motion to adopt the budget ordinance, you just make a note, the exception or hold these funds. And I think to Commissioner Lauk's point, uh, the timing, you know, and uh, Commissioner Baxter's point as well, timing is well suited. You've got many retreats in August, September, and October. 
You're going to be developing priority lists. There's not going to be funds to do everything you identify, but you'll be able to at least go through and prioritize and figure out which, where you're going to get the money from taxes, bond referendum, general fund, fund balance, or ARPA funds. So when you make the motion, just make the motion to uh, place these funds on hold until you can start to have that discussion at those three mini retreats that I just mentioned. Okay. For, for the whole amount, or do you want us to pull out an amount that we have decided is not going to go to stormwater? My, my recommendation is you would just hold off on the whole thing. Let me, let me point out. Um, the general fund ordinance that I gave out tonight, the amended one, that does not include the 1.85 million at all. This page A7 was an ordinance that's not even numbered yet, it just isn't in here for reference. That is the stormwater project. So the plan was to not even necessarily adopt it tonight. That was like a later date type thing. Okay. So yet the latest example of why I keep him right next to me. So there is actually a second ordinance related to the ARPA funds. Just don't adopt that. Oh, okay. Yeah, so nothing really needs to be done with the, the stormwater project tonight. No, no amendments need to be made to the 2022-51 the at all. That's not in there. Um, but the, the second ordinance is not. It's there. not even numbered right now. It, all right. So no decision has to be made on it tonight. So just to make sure I understand, we're going to put all the funds on hold, correct? The op. The op, correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. That the consensus? Okay. Yes. Corey, can I ask Chris, how is this going to affect our storm orders? How will it affect Vance, uh, East Vance Street? Will it affect that one? Well, it says that it's the Horton Street. I think you're okay delaying till you can to the August meeting or September meeting, but I would encourage you to make a decision at that time what you want to do because uh, these are federal funds. They have to go through very specific processes from qualification of consultants. They've got to go through design, permitting, easement acquisition, and all these things take time. They actually take years. So um, a, a couple months, 60 days, 90 days is not, is not material. But after that, we need to seriously start thinking about getting started on some of these improvements. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone's OK with putting it on hold? OK. What they say, we're on the ordinance 2022-51. Uh, before, before we move forward, five minute recess. OK. okay.
Uh, the only one that we have. Why not? Okay. Yeah. Reconvene. All right. I've got one, one, one more page. We've talked about all of them out of order. So, you know, let's continue that trend just a little bit longer. Um, E7, if you, if you will. The master plan as far as needing to um, address some of the issues with branding within our park system. Like every single park has a different sign. Um, it's just one example. So that's gonna wait till after we finish our branding process Absolutely. before this, okay. Absolutely. Um, under the tennis court resurfacing in Whitley Park, mm -hmm. which absolutely 100% needs to be done because it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, and why it's dangerous is because I believe that someone that was doing um, power washing mm -hmm. put the hot power washer down on that surface and it actually melted the surface and has caused divots. Mm -hmm. And my question for you is, was that was it one of our employees or was it a company that we contracted with that actually damaged those courts? Um, so I believe we contracted someone to power wash that, but the the majority of the issues on that court are far beyond like from the. No, I understand, power but there's but there's like is there any. Did we get any insurance from the contractor of, because of the damage to the courts? Um, so that's been a while. I'm trying to think. Yes, I mean, of course, we had insurance, um, a certificate of insurance, but I don't, I don't recall there being significant damage when we. I, I just don't recall that. I mean, it's been a couple of years since we had it power washed. Yeah. So I, I remember there being a little bit of discoloration, but that was something that could be repaired, but I'm not recalling. Well, then maybe this, this I, I thought that this happened during the power washing, um, but there are divots from where the hot machine mm -hmm. was placed on the surface and it like kind of caused this, these, you know, hot little divots that people have been like skidding and tripping mm -hmm. and one, person not too long ago like her ankle kind of pivoted mm -hmm. and she wound up falling because of it so I just didn't know if that was something that we had like gotten any um, insurance money to be able to put towards that resurfacing yeah I don't I don't think that that would have been because it from what I'm recalling it was mm -hmm. just a discoloration of the paint um, but like I said it's been some time and uh, it does not change the process or what has to happen on the tennis courts. The resurfacing is going to, to take off the surface and put something back on or, or put a new surface on top of it so that those divots will no longer be there yeah. because they are, they are riddled throughout the court. Yeah, when you resurface, um, I mean, it's kind of like when we resurfaced our <coughs> Um, in fields or when we do our basketball courts that when there's cracks in it or there's been impressions made I mean that's standard when you have a hard surface like that uh, so when you have that's why you have to have them resurface you see it in your parking lots from time to time you see it in your concrete um, so that's going to be standard in a resurfacing project since that's addressing the courts is that also going to be addressing the um, netting repair that's on the fences themselves. It seems like it's a very easy repair with mostly just like zip ties and time. Um, I will have our staff look at that particular uh, maintenance item, but no, I mean, a net repair would not be part of a resurfacing. Well, I just didn't know since it was just under the tennis courts that maybe that would be tied in. And could you explain a little bit about the Whitley Park expansion for the 61,000? Like what, what, what exactly is that encompassing? Yeah, um, so you adopted funds for the acquisition mm -hmm. of property there, um, but you also asked for um, consideration of change of scope. 
And so we are still working on the process, like working through what that scope would be. Um, so we will roll over the funds associated with your allocation. And I believe off the top of my head, it was that $61,000 was what we needed to move forward now. Okay. And I so, just... yeah, we're going to come back to you with the ultimate construction cost. Okay. And then finally, um, for Little River Park, mm -hmm. What is the ten thousand dollars associated with the grant application? Is that are we paying someone to write grants for us? Yeah. So when we first did the um, Parkstreet <coughs> Master Plan contract, there was actually a question Commissioner Laux had asked that are the when we hire these consultants to do these plans, are they also capable of? Um, helping you to secure funding and that is absolutely um, what they would do and I shared then that that is something that we would want to look for or look for assistance um, there are depending on the funding stream that you're going after especially if it's a federal funding stream there's just a lot of um, ins and outs that having uh, a team with a lot of experience in doing that and time because um, that's the other side. It takes a lot of time to put these together. Um, our staff, um, while I like to think that I could pull it together, uh, there's, a, there's just a lot of moving pieces on a, on a federal grant. And I think the, there's a lot of funding opportunity for Little River Park uh, with everything else this community has um, going on and our department has going on. I can't guarantee you that I can do it all. And so that's what the recommended $10,000 to um, have some assistance to go after grant applications is for. And that would be the, the same people that would, would be helping with the design aspect? Potentially. Okay. I mean, that's something we would just have to consider when we get to that point, who the best consultant would be for that. Okay. Thank you so very Absolutely. much. One quick question for me, on the ordinance is 2021. I just want to understand something, officer and jail fees. What does that consist of, Bob? Oh. Oh, on the ordinance is 2021. I mean, 2022, I'm sorry, 50-51. Officer fees, that's uh, that we get, like uh, when, you, when you go to court and pay some fees, for instance, uh, some of that comes back. I think it's four, uh, a few dollars per case comes back to us for cases that apply to our department. So you get about $1,250? Yeah. Wow. It's just a little bit, yeah. Okay. That's any court case or just, I mean, average? I believe it's from our cases. Like, let's say we arrest, we have, a, we have an arrest that goes to court, and then when somebody, or like a maybe a speeding ticket, things like that, that you pay a fine for, some of it comes back to us. How is that percentage found out? I mean, how do we get that percentage? What is that? I think it's maybe like four or six dollars or something like that per, um, or four fifty. I think it is because we a lot of times we get a check for four fifty, or nine dollars, or thirteen fifty. And that's just like the court cost aspect of it. We get a little portion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mayor, I have options for the board to consider if there are no more questions. More questions, comments? Okay. All right, option number one is you can uh, table this discussion to a future date, date certain. Option number two is you can adopt a budget ordinance with amendments to it couple of clarifications on that. If you adopt a budget ordinance, please make reference to the budget ordinance you're referring to. So I will make the distinction of the one we handed out last week versus the one we handed out this week. The difference between the two is the one handed out tonight includes the economic development specialist. So that's a distinction. The amendments are that you would just go through and you would say things as an example, add laptops, reduce retention percentage, reduce safety committee software, uh, move up weather camera, 
move back, fire signal, add, GAN and sidewalk. So you can do that. I feel confident, very confident that if you listed those amendments, I have no concerns about where the revenue is because a lot of these items are general fund, fund balance items. Um, and then the two that are operational, the, the differences are so marginal, I'm not worried about it. But that's option two, is adopt a uh, budget ordinance with those amendments. The third and cleanest, and the one that we will recommend, is that you adopt a budget ordinance with a budget amendment meeting to be scheduled and conducted at your, uh, it can be August work session, could be even August regular meeting, and we will not move forward on these things like um, safety committee software or retention percentage, so you can address these things as a budget amendment. They don't necessarily need to be, you don't have to figure it all out before you adopt the budget ordinance. So again, table to date certain, um, adopt a budget ordinance with all the amendments or adopt a uh, budget ordinance with the items mentioned to be um, held or frozen until you have a chance to understand all the details at a future budget adjustment meeting. So I'll answer any questions you've got, but those are the three options for council consideration. Comments? Option three. Is option three tabling it to a different date? Because no. that's what I'd no, like to do. No, that's approving it now. Oh, okay. And holding and scheduling a meeting to discuss the changes. Yeah, and, and we would just, we would roll that into one of your scheduled meetings. Uh, we could bring this back as early as your August regular meeting. And we've got it, we've already got it scheduled where we need to bring back uh, uh, information related to the stipend at your August work session. So we could, we could add it to that. Uh, if anything's not resolved at the August regular meeting, we could roll those unresolved items to August work session as well. But those items that you mentioned, they, they, you don't have to figure them out before you adopt the budget ordinance is what I'm trying to tell you. What's easiest? I'm thinking for me, table it for a while. It's, it's a lot of information that we digest. I would like for, okay, tonight for me, I'm looking at, I look at the citizens, give them an opportunity, we went through it, but also there's some that won't be able to watch it, know what we're talking about. I wanna give that opportunity for those that didn't get on social media or watch tonight, give an opportunity to watch, get a little feedback and the input for what it, I personally want the citizen input. We can sit here now and go ahead and move forward, but I personally want to get that citizen opportunity to watch it online or something like that and come back and give me some feedback. I'm okay with tabling it, but I think that we definitely well, need to, to put set a, a date. Set a date. Set a, we need to set a date and, um, cause we have to have it adopted by July 1st. All right. So. That was Commissioner Harris. I still think option three, but that's okay. Whatever we all want. Um, it, I guess it would de depend on the date because I'm out of town from like from this week until July 1st. So I don't really know how we would table it and come back because I won't be here for the rest of the month pretty much. Yeah, our next scheduled meeting I believe is August 9th. Correct. So we would table it until then. Adopt the budget as is presented with amendments to follow August 9th. Yeah, and we just we would move forward on those items that are in question. Yeah, I, I agree with with that adopting it with discussing the mm -hmm. items later mm -hmm. at a later date as well. Mm -hmm. consensus. Well, I would I I would like to table it with a specific date, even if it's for later on this week. Before I'm not, she's not here. She's so not you're here. leaving t tonight? Yeah, she, I'm right. leaving so, tomorrow. Yeah. So we can make the motion to adopt the ordinance and schedule the meeting to discuss the changes well, at a later date. I, um, I would, I don't feel comfortable with that. I feel like we need to actually go through and talk about and review every single thing that we talked about just so that, you know, it's clear in our head because, you know, we didn't even talk about 
the section five salary schedule a three percent adjustment to the town salary schedule so well, the, uh, you know like there, that's a three percent adjustment and then there's a two percent cola so that's well, a potential it's not written in stone so you know things can be changed right i'm going to make a motion we adopt the bu uh, ordinance 2022-51 motion for the choice three where we go ahead and adopt this and then schedule the meeting the you know our regular meeting in august to discuss the changes that we made a second i need to ask is which ordinance are you adopting are you adopting the one handed out tonight this is the one that was handed out tonight that's what i needed to know thank you has been a motion and a second Discussion. Well, di discussion wise, I only have that we changed five things from my notes, so I'll, I'll be happy to type this up or something and no, just blast it out to everybody. But there were only five items we changed. Okay. Discussion? I just really wish we could just, I mean, the table, but I mean, we're kind, of caught, we're kind of caught in a conundrum of situation right now. Like I said, this is a lot of information for me sitting here. Mm -hmm. I, just, I can only imagine the citizens mm -hmm. sitting there. And I know we're ready to move forward. I know it's long. This is my first time. So I'm not going to give a disclaimer, but I just want to make sure I do it right. I got three more times to do it. My foundation I'm setting down is very important for me. And as I say, I want to give a voice to the voices. I want the opportunity for the citizens to hear and discuss what we've done thus far and then move forward. So you're saying table it and meet later this month? Correct. But you don't, she won't be here again for the rest of the month, she's You're gone the rest of the month? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm not really sure well, how we're going to I mean, like, this is, this is how June works for us. Like, you know, we have these budget discussions, and, you know, there, there is the possibility that we have to meet a couple of times. Well, I, didn't, I didn't put that into consideration when I planned my vacation. So. I know, I know, I know. So we're going to I mean, to you, did, you didn't know that that's okay. That's okay. Right. I'm just saying that I would like to, I would like to table it for, for further discussion. We've got a motion on the floor in a second. Yeah, Any further discussion? Take a roll vote, Commissioner Louts. Um, decline or no. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Okay, yes. Yes. Decline. Decline. Okay, okay now let's set the date. So I make a move to a to table ordinance twenty twenty two fifty one for a further date. And then we need we to need have a, a discussion. We, now. We, we need to have a discussion between us as far as what might work. That's right. Well, then the, have the discussion first. Don't make the motion. Okay. We have a motion and a second. We, we don't yet, Mayor. We, don't I, do I, uh, we have to figure out what, what the date might be. Commissioner Baxter, just to keep it clean, if you would withdraw the motion so you call. I will out. withdraw the motion. Because what exactly do we need to talk about that we didn't talk about tonight? Or we just need more time to go over what we... I think for me, what it is, all the numbers and figures we've done it, this is the first time we've actually done it together as a group. Mm -hmm. Then I, there again, I go back to the number one on our chart is the citizens. I want that citizen at home to have an opportunity to watch social media, ask questions. They're going to have questions for me well, because you, this is okay. the way we have. Yeah, the, the budget is a living document, right. so we can change it month to month. Right. I, if you want, I will make an attempt to summarize in detail the five changes so we could adopt the ordinance with these five amendments as a suggestion. That way the budget gets adopted with these five amendments. And then, as I said, it's a living document, so we can always change it and modify it. Discussion? The second choice that you gave us? That was, that, that was option two. Okay. You want to make that in the form of a motion? 
I'm kind of looking at everybody as, do you want me to try that? Yes. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> then I make a motion. We adopt ordinance 2022-51, which was passed out tonight with a budget total of $18,982,350 with the following amendments. Number one, the governing board budget to be modified for materials and supplies to go from 3,400, an increase of $15,000 for the purchase of laptops for the board for a total, new total of 18,400 with that balance being funded from the general fund. Amendment number two, the administrative budget, the safety committee fund budget be from 11,500 reduced by $10,333 for a new total of $1,167 with the savings to general fund. Amendment number three, the retention bonuses, also the administrative budget, being from $350,000, reduced by $175,000 for a new total of $175,000 with the savings to general fund, and that will be a $2,000 retention bonus to all FTE 40-hour-a-week employees. Will that be a $2,000 or will that be the max and then scaled? That'll be $2,000 across the board for everybody, regardless of their salary. Mm -hmm. yeah. The next amendment is to the capital budget. Does that the, include the town manager and the department heads then? Yes. Okay. The next amendment is the capital budget the weather camera for the town hall be moved from 2024 into the current year, a $12,000 budget. That's an increase of $12,000 for a total of $12,000 funded from the general fund. And then from the capital budgets, sheet, specifically sheet E1, the judge Arendel fire signal budgeted $100,000 be reduced by $100,000 for a budget of zero with the savings going to the general fund. And the last amendment being from sheet E2, the West Sycamore Arendelle sidewalk, we add the West Gannon sidewalk improvements, taking the original budget at $315,000, be increased by $80,000 for a new total of $395,000 also funded from the general fund. Um, just during the recess for some clarification on the safety thing, the software piece of that, that I think was the hurdle, is only 3,500 of that. that. That's okay. We'll, we'll figure okay. that out. Okay, we can figure that out or adjust it accordingly. I didn't know what the actual budget amount was. I figured it was the increase of 1033. All right, we'll figure it out. Okay. So that's that's motion. my motion. Okay. It's okay. Second. We have a second. We have a motion and a second discussion. I just think this is a time frame where right now this is one of the most important things we'll do as a commissioners. Right now is budget. I still think we're moving just a little bit for me, moving a little fast. We've got it done. Yes, it's been around for a long time. But now coming down to this point right here, right now, what what is the problem with sitting back and kind of just taking a day or so and let it kind of like marinate and then come back? I mean, just that portion, yes, it may seem I'm um, like procrastinate, putting it off a little bit longer, but another day or two will not bother us. I mean, I, I really don't know how, it, with Commissioner Harrison being gone, I don't know how that would work, and I don't want to take that privilege from you, you know what I'm saying? I know it's very important for you as well, so I'm just trying to figure out what we can do, if there's anything we can do. There, there again, also a meeting in July. We're gonna, now we're going to table this, put it off. We won't talk about it again until August. So that's a long ways between, that span is a long time before it, to even readjust it. I mean, for me, that's my thought. Further discussion? Comments? I agree with a lot of what Commissioner Miles has put forth. We ready for a vote? We'll start with Commissioner Locks. Favor. 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 
favor. Not in favor. Motion passes. And remember, it is a living document. We can come back and change it month by month. Thank you. Yeah. Another quick thing is I've double checked my calendar and I will be out of, t out of state August 25th for the mini retreat and just asking if we could possibly schedule that for the following week on Thursday, September 1. And Labor Day is actually September 4th, so it would be before Labor Day. Discussion? Isn't an all-day retreat? Mm -hmm. um, you won't need to make a decision now. I think the thing I would recommend is just look at your calendars and pencil it in, and we can bring back a schedule revision to you at your August regular meeting. Discussion for us. Before we close, I just want to make sure that my vote, I understand the concept that those watching now understand. I understand the importance of the budget. I wanted to make sure that I'm saying that due diligence is done for myself, what I feel comfortable with when I vote, and make sure those citizens, number one, will get that chance, the opportunity to discuss with me prior to. That's my reason for voting. Here, here. So I think that we can discuss that in the August meeting. <laughs> All right. Any other questions, comments? Thank you. Thanks, staff, for all the work you do. Thank you for going above and beyond. Um, I think sometimes we, we forget that you know, we have a, a very limited staff here. We got a lot of research, a lot of, lot of work that, that's, that's before us. Um, so i like to commend you on your efforts for all the work, hard work you do. On behalf of make these decisions. On behalf of staff, we appreciate that. Thank you. It, on behalf of staff, we appreciate that. All right. If that's nothing else to call our attention, meeting adjourned.